Could I, you be maybe my first signature? Um, because if you well, own I'm not property, registered, like, I'm not a registered voter there. Is that the same rule? No, no, no. You just need to own property to have a signature, have an oh. address. Well, Bill, so uh, Dave, I don't want to, I'm I, not asking I, for I, your endorsement. Wait, 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 okay. wait, wait, Billy, Billy, let me step in. I, Welcome back to Macro Dosing. What's up, people? It is Wednesday. It's Thursday. 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 It's Thursday when this comes out. It's March 14th. Uh, Pi Day. Happy Pi Day, everybody. Mm -hmm. um, How many who, digits do you know? Uh, we, we did this already. Maddie got us all beat, bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mad Dog, do, do the Pi numbers. 3 3.14159265353589723284626433. Fucking nerd. I don't, I don't remember skill. doing this. That's <laughs> wild. You don't remember this, Big T? Damn, no, it's I, been, thought, I thought I had CT. It's been at know, least maybe. one year. Uh, so we're, uh, it's, it's been like two Could years, be two. Maybe. Yeah. Two. We've got uh, we've got Wonton Don in studio with us today, too. We're going to talk a little bit about the new episode of Last Chance Uganda coming out. And most importantly, uh, Billy has something great prepared for us today. Uh, Billy is running for Congress, and he did a PowerPoint presentation. And he has he's done some work on this. So Billy takes some a lot of shit on the internet. I, I will be the first to admit that. Occasionally I stir up the Billy a shit of, cauldron. A lot of self inflicted wounds though. I will just want to put that out there. That's also true. Billy take he gets some shit, some of which is well deserved, some of which we like to stir up a little bit. But um one of my favorite things about Billy is when he gets passionate and he cares about something. And I think he's really gonna care about this run for Congress because just from the I'll text, take it serious. from the texts I was getting last night from Billy uh, in the group chat, he was he's doing some planning and he's like five steps ahead of the game. So this is going to be good. Congressman Football will be joining us. Uh, and before we get to that, though, he also it was passionate about coaching football in Uganda. And Donnie is in studio to talk about the new episode of Last Chance Uganda. There's going to be a clip that comes out tomorrow, Billy, and um, people are going to absolutely love it. But I want to give you the chance to respond to it. Uh, can you set up, set the stage for us, Donnie, of when this was filmed? Okay. So, um, yeah, I guess while we're recording this, the video came out last night. So if you've seen it, um, you know at the very end after – well, I don't want to spoil it. But, yeah, it was a very disappointing game. Passions ran extremely high. Um, and – the next morning, you know, after the game, we all have the the adrenaline running through us. We're all like amped up. But um, the following morning, that's when all of the emotions from the previous day just came back and hit Billy like a ton of bricks. And uh, while we were in the car, he kind of um, he was on the phone with his mom, I think, and broke down, was shedding some tears. But um I know he's kind of worried about this coming out and he's a little embarrassed, but I don't think there's anything to be ashamed about. He was just, uh, it just shows how passionate he was. And I mean, when you watch the video, you will see how devastating a loss it was. All right. Well, let's watch it together and we'll get everyone's reaction, including Billy seeing it for the first time. Uh, malaria medication really fucks you up in the head, man. All right, so, uh, you, you have, we can watch the video and you'll have plenty of time for your excuses after the video is over. <laughs> Um, so we're gonna we're gonna press play at the count of three. All right, one, two, three. They went so damn hard, and they played so damn hard, and they got screwed by the referees. Oh man, this made me really emotional. I I went to war with them, and the fact that they didn't get a win was terrible because they fought so damn hard. They, they, they did everything right. They did everything right. <laughs> they did everything right and they got robbed. We were getting five yards every carry and they kept moving the first down marker. The worst thing was that they trusted me and we, just, we didn't get the win. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm so emotional. It's just like, it's just hitting right now. I, I never watched Ted Law, so I'm exhausted, but I played in the game and I fought with them. I love, I love you, Mom. I gotta go. How do I look? Um, I look rough, but do I look like I was crying? Yeah. Pull yourself together. All right, that was Billy. Um, a couple things real quick, Billy. One, 
uh, Ted Lasso. Dude, I didn't, I didn't see that. Um, what was that in response to? I, I assume your mom had asked you like, oh, like, it's kind of like you were the real life Ted Lasso. And then you were just yeah. like, I've never seen that show. <laughs> yeah. Um, honestly, that that brought me back to that moment. Ted does get um, relegated in his first season, so. Okay, yeah. Um, okay. Um, damn, I just kind of got, I just got put back in that moment. Get emotional again. Yeah, oh, dude. It's different because it wasn't like what was just like really pulled at, pulled at me was that those like I've never in a position where I had, you know, besides like playing on teams before, but like being in a coaching position, being in a leadership position like that and, you know, making calls and just sort of being uh, and just, you know, coming up short and for reasons that you couldn't even fathom and couldn't even just blindsided by uh, it's you know but they just it was more that they trusted me so much and you know i was like we're gonna win if we do this we're gonna win if we do this and then when they did all those things and we still didn't win it just broke my heart yeah uh, it's hard to explain i know yeah i mean i was very sad after the game too i think if i had played you know maybe maybe i would have been in tears too but I think the fact that I wasn't like out there on the field with the boys, that I could be like a little more removed from the situation. No, it's just, I know it was such a short time, but we were literally like, you know, after practice, I'm texting every single guy, telling him like sending videos of techniques. And it's like, it's just crazy. The whole thing was, if we lost, if we had gotten beaten straight up, it would, I wouldn't have been, I would have been like, we got beat. But just the way we lost and the way, um the players played like the the you know it's just it it's heartbreaking it's one of those things where you know yeah people are gonna be clowning me and i'm an ugly crier and uh yeah, you are it just it, if i if i had gotten my at like if we just gotten whooped it would have been almost like oh shit we got we got whooped like you know we got clowns we got absolutely stomped on it would have been like you know a loss is a loss but to lose like i've never lost like that in my life like i've lost a lot of games um, but that one was the worst ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that my initial takeaway was Billy's a he's a very ugly crier. We can't help how we show our emotions. That's just how he cries. He's also, the, when you're trying not to cry. Yeah, yeah. You were doing the thing where you were like holding it in, like like crinkling up your nose a lot, and trying to not like block the tears out of your eyes from coming down. And, and then also crying in front of a a new driver who didn't really know us, uh, <laughs> and then your coworker. And then the whole internet and you're like, oh shit, this is going to go out. But no. Seeing how uncomfortable was... Donnie was in the front seat was also very funny. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, it's God, funny. Laugh at it. It's fine. You can laugh. Like la it's, you know, yeah, it was, you know, it's comedy to eat to a lot of people out there, but it was, it was real to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not as bad as I thought. And, you know, it's probably gonna get clipped and sent around. Uh, the yak will probably play it and clown me, but it was, uh, and hey, I think if if you watch the full vid, you'll kind of understand why he was so emotional after the game. Um, and obviously, you were really emotional during the game too, but it was more of like a rage. Just yeah, it, it was berserker. You know, there's on. actually if you look at the old Norse texts, uh, a lot of berserkers would curl up and cry like children for days on end after going berserker mode. It's yeah. the most powerful um, thing a man can do. Pete yeah, Prisco would disagree, just like, by the way, Billy. I don't know if you saw part of my take, but we interviewed Pete Prisco, and he said he doesn't like Caleb Williams because he cried after a game and that men shouldn't cry after football games. So this is proof that, like, it's actually because you care so much that mm -hmm. you cry afterwards. Well, Pete Prisco can get bent. I mean, he's like a fucking peanut, dude. He's probably never played football. Like, <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> understand the emotions. Like, you know, like, what the – like, Pete Prisco, like, I, yeah, I'll punch you, dude. Like, is he, like, 5'2"? <laughs> Like he's a little guy, dude. There's all these dudes who never played football talking about football. And even though I have not played like a high level of football, there's a certain like thing that like Arian can definitely describe it better, but like, you're not allowed to cry after a football game. Like, you know, it's not crying cause you're being a sore loser. There's like other reasons why, like there's like, I was, I was just so sad that I let down like a bunch of guys who literally were so amped up, so deserving, 
so everything. And I just, I, I, I couldn't prepare them enough. And that like, like disappointing other people, like in that way who had so much trust in you, it's, it's, it was such a complex level that I, I don't know, dude, it's, it's when you get hit with a curveball of that from a, you know, a consequential, like, you know, interpersonal relationship standpoint, like it fucks you up. Like, it's yeah. like, you know, I don't know, dude. No, I, I, I'm, I'm with you, man. I, I am. It's a very, very funny clip. Don't get me wrong. I am going to post it. I, I am going to laugh while watching it again. But I also know that it came from a place of passion <laughs> and caring. And I just want you to know that, like, I, I, in a way, I respect it. It's not how I would have reacted, but maybe that's why I'm not a leader of men. Maybe that's why I'm not going overseas <laughs> and playing football in Uganda. Arian, uh, as a former player, um, what do you think about crying after a game like that? Um, I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to shit on Billy because I've grown as a man as far as like expressing emotions. I think that you should be able to express emotions freely, uh, and it's okay to cry. Um, I personally think he was crying because he was drunk. That's what I, <laughs> I think you. I think no. you just lit. I think you just lit. The moment got a hold of you, and and that also happens when you drink. <laughs> because the game itself, like, I, don't, I don't feel like that would be something to get so emotionally wrapped up in. I think if you uh, subtract alcohol from the situation, I don't think you cry. He's crying uh, right know, that now. That's a great point. I no, it, I feel like sometimes I could, I'm going to be honest. I'm like, going to be honest. numbs my emotions. The, the malaria medication was giving me these like weird things. Like at the, at the pyramids, I was like looking at the pyramids. I was like, oh man, dude, like. That's so awesome. And then like I sort of started tearing up even before this even happened. That's what I'm saying though. I don't I don't I don't think it's the malaria medication, my guy. I think I think it's the alcohol. At the pyramids, I, he was he was completely sober though and started to tear up a little bit. What I thought I thought he was faded at the pyramids. Oh no, so <laughs> we no, got that was he got faded after seeing the pyramids. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Also, well, I was yeah, talking yeah, to my but... mom and I sort of thought I was in pro like when you know I don't think anyone outwardly cries, but like when you're talking to your mom about what happened and like your mom, someone who sort of like, you definitely sh get your guards down. Yeah. Same and place. that moment just happened to get captured and, you know, it was going to the airport and uh, now it's going to be seen by a lot of people. Uh, so, you know, think about moments that you talk to your mom and you're kind of like, I'm, I don't blame it that it was captured at all. I'm not being like, Donnie, what the fuck? You're exposing my conversation with my mom. Cause I think it does capture a lot of like the emotional ups and downs of this series that is not over by any means. It gets crazier. Um, yeah. So but part of the reason that I thought it was fine to film you is that after the game, at one point you came up to me and I think you were crying even harder and that caught me completely off guard. And I was like, okay, I'd feel like an asshole if I immediately just shove a camera in your face. But then I think later you said something like, oh, no, I wouldn't have cared if you filmed that. Like, it just it captures the yeah. passion. So then when it yeah. happened again the next day, I was like, all right, I, I got to get this on tape. Yeah, That tip. first one, I was hammered. I was <laughs> okay. because I was in pain. I was in a lot of pain, like yeah. just straight up like coaching all week, not going through a camp and then jumping in a football game where it's a ground and pound mud bowl and you're getting hit every play. Yeah, I, after the adrenaline wore off, I was just like, yo, I got to drink this off because there's no ibuprofen out here. There's mm -hmm. no, like, I, I, do, I do not want to test you gone in painkillers right now. Like, I'm in pain. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think, that was, I think from that the was moment the, the game ended to the moment we flew out, you were pretty hammered. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Yeah. Things well, happen. Things do. Um, as you'll see in the video, Billy did go full berserker mode he like smashed this table right before we ran out i mean that got me amped up i was, I was just... trying to amp up the guys yeah because the, the thing is they were like the kenyans are pretty big and like they had a bigger team than us yeah so i was like you could see the whole there's the dynamic of like in high school or middle school football where you're looking over at the other team and you're like oh man they look big mm -hmm. holy shit like like I was trying to be like, yo, we're not scared. Don't be scared. And, you know, just try to pump them up. And, you know, if it took smashing a table to get them pumped, it, it, we had to do it. Should have smashed a watermelon. Should have done the, the Mike McCarthy. 
We didn't have the a Gallagher, watermelon. isn't it? He also smashes watermelon. That was his right? thing. Yeah, Gallagher okay. was an all-time comedian. I don't know if you only guys remember Gallagher. The only reason I know him, only reason um, I remember him, is because uh, the, the Chappelle show, and he did the Black Gallagher. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gallagher was a trip. Smash some fruit. <laughs> the only time I felt the wrath of Billy during the game is um, after halftime. I had to take over as a line judge because, like, the people doing it had no idea what they were doing, and I didn't really know what I was doing either. But at one point, I thought. Um, Uganda had recovered a fumble, had like sacked the QB and recovered the f- fumble. So I started to move the first down marker backwards. But in reality, Kenya had just recovered their own fumble. And so Billy saw me moving it back and just like unleashed on me. He was like, <laughs> hey, because he was trying to yell from the other side of the field. So we had him on tape being like, Donnie, what are you doing? No! Because <laughs> we had just... And we just got a whole first half where we just weren't getting first downs because yeah. the, you know, oh and then God, like yeah. I subbed in and started doing the same thing and that I could hear him screaming from the other side and I was like, Oh shit, nope, I'm sorry. That's so good. Oh, uh Big T, what are your thoughts on the video? It's one of the five to ten funniest things I've ever seen. Five to ten, not even top you can't even say top ten. I like that. Well, it's between it's five not five and ten. to it's not five to one. Correct. So it's probably not five. Yeah, six to ten. Six to ten. Yeah. What's top five? I mean, I there's no I can I I don't know, but I'm sure there have been some that are honestly mm-hmm. maybe legit maybe the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life was Pat Bev's face uh, watching Mantis come in and start nailing free throws at like three in the morning yeah. when everyone was delirious and like it, and his it was maybe the funniest thing I've ever seen. That was pretty good. Yeah, for sure. That's certainly where, top five. Where does that woman screaming on her knees after Trump gets elected? Is that in the top 10 for you or no? No, that was like funny the first time you saw it, but that wasn't like, you know. Oh, so you think this one's going to be timeless? What? Well, in a different way. I don't know if it's like, I don't know if there's a, a super memeable part of it. I'm sure that there probably is if you were to like go frame by frame. I mean, he's sobbing saying, I've never seen Ted Lasso. <laughs> 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 if you took a frame, he could become the new like sad Jordan meme. Yeah, uh, <laughs> crying <damn>. Billy. Yeah, <laughs> it's well, good, Billy. It's 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 very funny, and I do appreciate the passion that you have for it. And Last Chance Uganda is a, a banger of a series, so go watch it. It's on U- YouTube. It's on uh, the Donnie Does YouTube. Or is it the Wonton Don? YouTube? The Wonton Don. The Wonton Don. Yep. The Wonton Don YouTube page. Go check it out, and there's there's a lot more to come from it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this three is more episodes. The, yeah. It, this is the mid-season finale and the the grand finale is crazy it's like it, it's consuming it now as a consumer like it was a, it was a freaking movie it was a mini series like there was writers like writers is in like you couldn't write some of these twists like the good guys become world. bad guys bad guys become good guys like it is we lived a full like drama series. Like Friday Night Lights doesn't have shit on this. <laughs> like Let's actually, go. no, I mean, if, if we could find a sponsor in the future, I think just like choosing a new country to go and coach for once a year would be great. I mean, we already have a guy on the Swedish football team and he was like, our coach just quit the team. We like really need someone. Our game is in less than a month. And he wants me and Billy to go out and coach their uh, Swedish football team. I unfortunately don't think I can swing it with such late notice, but I do think it's a great concept. Yeah. Um, and I actually, I ran into Shane Gillis over the weekend. I, I went to his show and mm-hmm. I know he's a big football coach guy. He always says like, if I wasn't, if I wasn't a comedian, I would be coaching high school football. So I tried to sell him on like coming back out of us to finally get the Ugandan team a dub. And he loved what we were doing, but I I don't think he was sold. His schedule is pretty crazy right now. Yeah. yeah. I was like, what if we like offered you mid five figs for like a 10-day <laughs> coaching contract? And he was like, I think it would have to be more than that. <laughs> yeah. He, I mean, the amount of shows that this guy does, and I think he's working on some, some movies right now too. Yeah. You but think yeah, he's getting be... like 50K for a show? Like how much no, do you think No, I, I think he just... I think he was kind of like scared about the prospect of traveling to Africa. He, I, I don't yeah, know if he's a big, if he's like a huge, a huge travel guy. Traveler. Yeah. He's also, he's, I think he's a little bit worried about being overexposed right now because he's everywhere. 
Yeah. And so he's very conscious of that. Like a lot of people, you go on YouTube, all the shorts are just like, here's a Shane Gillis clip. Yeah. Yeah. And, which is good. It's great for promotion. But at the same time, you burn people out if you're everywhere that quickly. Yeah. So he's like a little bit wary about doing too much stuff, mm -hmm. which I get. I, I understand. But that would be incredible. But also like Donnie, you and, and Billy doing this has been fantastic. I, I, I would like to see Arian get involved at some point. I, I really would. Like, cause he knows, you know, more about football than anybody else. And I know that you gave Billy some like advice on some of the plays to call things like that. I think if you were actually in the mix though, uh, you would, Billy would actually teach the plays. Arian just needs to think of like where he wants to travel the most. And then we'll find a football team that needs us to help, <laughs> needs us Japan. to help coach for a week. They're going to do it in Japan. I'm so down for that. There's teams in Japan. Yep. They play out there. That's I will. I'm all boy. I will fucking do a stint there. I will do a residency there. Okay. You're going to hear a crazy <laughs> accent trying to coach in Japan though. Oh, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to hear a wild. You can't do that, Billy. You're have you ever, been, te have you ever oh, been, yeah. been tested for anything like <laughs> neurologically? No, I can I get a brain scan. Can we make that content? I, I, there's something wrong, <laughs> but I, it's perfect for I'm Congress. Dead I'm dead ass serious. <laughs> to be fair, I mean, well, Billy's accent didn't really make sense because he wasn't even trying to copy the Ugandan player's accent. He was just doing his own South African sort of blood diamond no, accent. But I was, I wasn't yeah. doing an accent. I was trying to help people. Like if but, you notice, it was only the first day, and then once I realized where certain people were with their english like you could you could start i started talking regularly yeah. like some like you know half of the problem if you in spoiler alert actually if you've seen the second episode our quarterback did not speak english well and it really was impacting play calling and you know we had to like maneuver like we donnie only the the guy uh what's the best Holy way to say it? shit man land your plane I'm trying to lay my play. We only showed the guys with the best English. Like Donnie, did you interview any of the guys? Put in any of the interviews with I guys? I talked to George. Um, okay. A little bit, but yeah, I mean, his he wasn't he wasn't as fluent, but yeah, I mean, I kind of do the same thing when I'm around certain foreigners. I just end up talking really slow, and when I lived with people from Liverpool, like after a few months, I was just like speaking with a Scouse accent. Oh yeah. And it was awesome, but the like the thing is now that I don't live with them anymore, I I sort of completely forgot how to do it. But if I was back with people from Liverpool, after like three days, I'm gonna start like speaking with like a little bit of a Scouse accent. I noticed that when we were in Qatar. I don't know if that made it into uh into any of the videos that we put out, Donnie, but there were times when you would like talk to cab drivers, talk to just like workers on the street, and you started to do like, We need to go to the airport. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. And I was yes, I was like I cracking know. up. I was yeah. like Donnie Donnie's doing the accent again. So yeah. it's not it's not just Billy. Yeah. You know who else does it? Daniel Cormier when he's talking to the Dagestanis. Oh, does he? Yeah. Like when he's talking to Khabib and like Islam Makachev, uh can't pronounce his last name. But he's like he does the exact same thing I do. Can you do a Dagestani accent? No, he just speaks, I wrestle you. Like, no, 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 we wrestle. Yeah. Like, like it's, I'm just saying pigeon English is more universally spoken than English. Okay. Pigeon English. All right. That's fair. Um, well, welcome to macrodosing. Yes. <laughs> I'm just hearing about the fact you're running for Congress. Yeah. I was telling it's, PFT uh, though, like if you happen to win, are you ready to commit to being a congressman? Yeah, dude. Honestly, I was, <laughs> yeah, I've been looking into, I've been looking into what congressmen do. And it's a lot of dinners. It's a lot of getting paid for talking to people. And that's bullshit. And we need, and it's all these old like incumbents who have been there for years. And most of the questions that they ask at all these hearings are written by their uh, staff. Mm -hmm. And first thing I haven't even announced I'm running for Congress, but if I were in Congress, I would write all of my own questions for the individuals in all of these hearings. That is the first thing I'd promise because it is bullshit that you have guys who have been there for 20, 30 years and they don't even bother to get the right information on the issues they're dealing with. And they end up, you know, getting a intern to write questions for them. And then they don't even understand the issues they're voting on. 
That's true. There's Billy term limits. Yeah, Billy. Billy is learning about our what, what branch? Our legislative system. When you know, after that, um, if I were to win a seat in Congress, um, I would only serve for two to three terms. I would not serve over that. Uh, taking a book out of one of my mentors, Chris Gibson, who only served two terms in Congress. One of your mentors. Yes. It took the whole book, not even a page. <laughs> <laughs> um, is the race just, would it just be Billy versus Santos? Uh, no. So, so we'll get into this okay. in just a second. This is a yep. good teaser. Uh, we are going to have Dave Portnoy from Barstool Sports. He's the founder of Barstool Sports. He'll be coming on the show to talk about uh, his run for Boston mayor back in, I forget what year it was. It was a long time ago, like 2010, 2000, I don't know, some, sometime around then. Um, but the topic of today's episode is going to be based around unusual celebrity or outsider runs for uh, public office. Okay. So it's in the news a lot because of Billy football. That's what everyone's talking about. I can't believe this guy, Billy football is going to run for office. Um, also, Aaron Rodgers might run for vice president. I heard about that. Yeah. Uh, so at the end of Monday's episode that came out on Tuesday, uh, I, I dropped a little nugget in there. I just said, when Aaron Rodgers is in the news, just know that I knew. Um, and we were talking, I told everybody on the show about Aaron potentially running for vice president. As of this morning, uh, Jesse, the body has not been asked to run for RFK juniors vice president. Um, but in the article that came out, it was like, these are the two front runners and, uh, RFK Jr. said that he had asked the person to be his his nominee. So apparently uh, Tulsi, she said no. Who else said no? Cinema, she said no. So he went to these people first? Yeah, he went to these people first, and they turned him down. And now he's reached the Jesse the Body Ventura and Aaron, and Aaron Rodgers, Rodgers portion of the program. I think Aaron's going to do it. He's on an ayahuasca trip right now. Thousand. But going to do it. Would he not be able to play football this coming season? That is, that's the fascinating part of it because I hope that he tries to do both. I don't know how it's possible <laughs> to do both, but I hope that he does. Arian, how, like, if, if at minimum, if you were like, I'm going to spend the bare minimum amount of time required in the team facility on a, t uh, you know, Wednesday through Saturday of a game week, what's the least amount of time you can be in there mm, as a quarterback that's it's tough to do because <clears throat> the office kind of revolves around you right so you have to know what everybody's doing so you, you you're in meetings upon meetings i mean bare minimum you get there when the first team meeting starts which you know everybody's different but like we'll go off of ours i think ours ours started at eight but majority of players have been in there for an hour or two, warming up, working on your body, going over stuff. Then you got you, so you got meetings, you got practice, lifting, all that stuff. You out of there, bare minimum. You out of there around three, maybe four. Oh, he could do that mm -hmm. so easy. Seven a.m. to four, fly an hour or two to wherever the, their rally or whatever is that night. He, the, the, he, this could happen. I think it could happen. I think that it should happen. <laughs> I think it should happen. I said I said yesterday on PMT when the news came out, I would strongly consider voting for RFK Jr. and Aaron Rodgers just because of the content that it would deliver to us. I mean, you can say you did it forever. I voted for Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Don't play. I also looked at the schedule. The AFC Championship game is the same week as inauguration. What a week. What a week that could be, huh? So the number one thing that coaches always say is we don't want any distractions mm -hmm. that's oh, yeah. all you think that'd be a distraction say, oh my god if 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 this man does that shit that would be maybe the biggest distraction in nfl history now i'm <laughs> yes. not a proponent of we don't need distractions but we're gonna put that that theory to the test if he does this if you if you don't want distractions and you got this man as the quarterback that will be the biggest distraction of all time. Well, don't you remember when he joined the Jets, he had that quote that was like, all the bullshit in this building that's not about winning, we got to get rid of. If yeah. it's not about winning, mm. we're we're canning it. Yep. Well, I mean, let's technically, he's trying to win that something. That is true. So. But that is true. He didn't specify football, I don't believe. <laughs> technically, though, RFK has like, 
a two percent chance of winning the election. I'd put it closer oh, to zero, that's but sure. yeah, yeah zero. where you get that percentage from? I, I don't know. I was gonna say zero, but I, I wanted to give him a chance. Now, with with uh, the addition of Aaron Rodgers, I does that does that help his chances? He will get the um, meme community. Yeah, the meme community. The meme community is <laughs> which, strong. Which you know, you know that's hurts? an extra couple hundred thousand votes. Like fuck it, in the words of Trevor Bauer, do it for the lols. Sure. I mean. What are they? Ba- they're basically running on like, uh, not like no COVID vaccines. Like, is that their? That's like their main platform. Oh, wrong. I've, 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 wrong. That's not his <laughs> okay. only thing. Running on the Liberty <laughs> platform, Arian. Okay. Because <laughs> I think he actually makes a lot of great points. Oh I mean, shit! I think, I think when it comes to vaccines, he's scared some people off because he's like, is he anti like all vaccines he's he's big he's been very big yeah. in the all anti-vax community for a long time yeah he's like vaccines cause mm-hmm. autism he's well yeah. well he also oh, clean he also cleaned up the hudson river so you got to give said, him props oh, for that i'm a congressman yeah. now wait wait what, what was that billy? <laughs> yeah, missed, yeah, missed billy said he was about to chime in with the vaccine shit he said ah oh, i'm a congressman now <laughs> he can't say it <laughs> I think the people would love to know your take, but you're going to have to put some policies out there. Look, I think that uh, regulation of you know large industries, especially uh, the pharmaceutical industry, that has um, frankly gotten away with a lot in this country. Yep. Uh, I think we definitely need to do our due diligence on uh, their powers that be. Because look, there's a lot of lobbyists in Washington – uh, that do their bidding, and we really need to make sure that the checks and balances of this nation are enforced on everyone. I would agree with about that. To, now, about to clean uh, up the swamp, Billy? <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know if we're getting into this right now. I do have a question for Billy about uh-huh. his campaign. Can I? Yeah, yeah. Well, S- yeah, yeah, proceed. So, uh, Billy, you are, you're going to challenge George Santos in the Republican primary, correct? Well, no, I'm uh, challenging the incumbent, uh, Lolata. Um, who Santos is challenging okay, because right. of a spiteful run, which shows that I do care about the actual district, New uh, York's okay, first but the, congressional but district. But the question's not about that. It doesn't matter. Um, excuse me. I haven't answered your question. You, I haven't uh, asked George it. Santos he, doesn't actually That's right, Billy. Go after the press. I haven't asked the go, after, the, go after the fake George news, George Santos Billy. doesn't actually care about the first congressional district, so I'm not running against him. I'm running against his incumbent, uh, who oh, okay, I frankly that's good. think- Get your facts right, um, Big T. You're another member of the line media. He's a more media. worthy opponent- who I'm running against. George Santos doesn't care about the Sandy Dunes from Quag to Montauk, uh, the military <laughs> uh, families that live in uh, the mm-hmm. district, mm-hmm. both the North Shore and the South Shore. Sir. And most of all, I'm here for those who are there year round. I'm right. not here for those who buy the the beachside homes, who frequent the you know montauk boardwalk and spend exorbitant amounts in the off season that aren't there in the off season i'm here for the year rounder mm. okay that's that great like, um, that also sounds like people a shot call that people say i'm yeah. a carpet yeah. bagger, but i've been in the hamptons for as long as i can remember i became a man in the hamptons can i ask george my santos doesn't know that now uh, wait like, wait 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 bill are you saying you lost your virginity in the hamptons can we can we, can we not yeah. ask personal questions? That's very inappropriate talking about minors' sexualities. I didn't know that you were a minor when you lost your virginia. You could have been eighteen. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Can we? <laughs> let's, you know, sounds like the more Billy talks, the more information bedrooms. he volunteers. What people do in their own bedrooms <laughs> is their business. Uh, I don't think we should it, try to police. Not when it's a minor, then it, then it becomes did our have, business. Did you have sex with a minor? <laughs> <laughs> This is the worst start to a political campaign ever. <laughs> Next My question. question suddenly seems insignificant. <laughs> what is your question, Big No, D? no, okay, I'm going to put a pause to it. We can, oh, yeah, man. we can circle back to this later. <laughs> and I was referring to myself as the minor. You're the creep asking about the minor. I no yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I was a member the of the press. Really. Have you set ever the crossed the press? Straight, bro. <laughs> don't let the Don't let the mainstream media... The mainstream media has already jumped my bones. <laughs> All right, we'll get we'll get back to this in a little bit. I promise. I promise. Oh we'll do, my God, we'll, right. we'll do a deep dive. Billy's got a big presentation coming up. Um, but let's let's just talk real quick about Aaron Rodgers again. Um, oh, man. Aaron Rodgers, if he did run as vice president, I think it would be the biggest sports story ever in the history of sports stories. Oh, I, I don't know, bro. OJ. OJ, bro. That shit was. Yeah. That shit was. 
Yeah, I, th- I would. I would have to go. It, had, it would be number two. I genuinely regret that I was not alive for the OJ trial. It's like everything that yeah, I love. You would have loved it for Think sure. Except blows, uh, murder. Man. I hate murder. It I'm was... anti murder. But the <laughs> the legal uh, ramifications, yeah. I'm interested in. I mean, it so was... which like former professional athletes have ran for office in the past? Are there some? Yeah, there are some, and and we can we can get into them in a little bit. We've got a, a big list of people that have tried to do it. Um, but professional athletes, let's see, uh, Jesse, the body Ventura, obviously. And he uh, won, right? He won. He yeah. was the governor was of Minnesota. Well, what sport did he play? He was WWE. <laughs> he was also a Navy SEAL. I think, didn't he, didn't he repel from a helicopter into the state Capitol on the first day that he was, he was in office? <laughs> Dude, he was electric hearing some stories, uh, from Minnesota. Back in the day, about Jesse the body. Oh yeah, I, I dude, love dude it. could get it done. Is I that love the dude. I wrote Where the are book? the twenty eight pages of the of the nine eleven report that hasn't been released yet? We haven't seen the twenty eight pages. He had he had one of the funniest, maybe all time great book title of all time: Democrips and Re- Bloodlicking. <laughs> <laughs> can we get him on the but, show, Mad Dog? Can you reach I, out I'm to Jesse's sure people? Yep. I think he would do it. He does a lot of media. And uh, he is he's an entertaining dude. Um, he didn't he sue Chris Kyle? Yeah. I, well, Chris Kyle said that he did something to him. Chris Kyle said that he beat Jesse the Body Ventura up, and he lied. Yeah. He lied about it. And so I think Jesse the Body won a lawsuit against Chris Kyle. But yeah, he's yeah. Uh, the dude's got stories for days. So he's one. Uh, Caitlyn Jenner would be another yep. athlete. Uh, oh yeah. Because Arnold, depending on who you ask, if bodybuilding is a sport, I think it's definitely a sport. Yeah, Heath Schuler, Heath Schuler, Heath yeah. Schuler, hey, he's still running. Hey. Redskins legend, Heath Schuler. Uh, my that. mayor of he... Knox County, Tennessee, Kane. Oh, that's right. Glenn yeah, Jacobs. Awesome mayor. Ger- Gerald Ford. He played. I think he played a second for a professional team after he played at Michigan. But I could be wrong. Um, Fucking Herschel Walker, bro. Yeah, yeah. Herschel Walker. My, my man has his son. evaporated. Where did this nigga go? I don't know. I don't know what Herschel's up to these days. That, his that was his a, son has dug him into a hole. That was a wild, wild. He may have been that. That may that to me as a unbiased was probably the biggest staying on the Republican in a long time. That man, you talking about can't string a sentence together? That man had issues, bro. And they just was trying their hardest to get this man elected. It was insane. Which I'd cool. argue George Santos is the worst staying on the Republican uh, party in recent all right, well, all right, Billy, we'll get to it in a little bit. A but also story. George Santos, <laughs> uh, former athlete, I think he won the 100 meter dash at Harvard when he attended there. False. Um, he also won, I think, an NCAA championship in hockey and basketball in the same year, which is pretty impressive. Oh, and volleyball. Oh, yeah. Santos? Oh, yeah. All this stuff is true. Oh. False. He did claim to be like a, an all-American volleyball player at one point. <laughs> at Baruch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, which is an all-women's school. No. It's not anymore? <laughs> no. no. The more I talk about George Santos, the more I want to vote for him. Um, so Billy, I'm, I'm, I'm going to need to hear some convincing from you in a little bit. Oh, I got convincing. I mean, I thought, there I thought he was kicked out. Down. So he's like not allowed to run anymore or what? Wasn't he like removed from Congress? He, he was removed from his seat. Um, but he's running in a different district now. Oh, okay. He was yeah. removed from the New York third district. Now he's going to run in the first district. He's trying to, uh, run against the guy who got him kicked out of Congress Okay, as a spiteful move. He doesn't actually care about the good people of New York's first district is the only rule to run is that you own property in that um, district. I'm sure Billy has looked into the bylaws okay. regarding that. And we, I, I think that's something we can get into, um, as Billy does his formal presentation. I it's in say, the presentation. I want, I want to save a little bit for, for after we, we bring Dave on. But there's a couple other topics I want to jump into that people are passionate about here. Um, one would be Nick Saban testifying before Congress yesterday, testifying that he got out of college sports uh, in large part because of NIL name, image, and likeness, and how it's changed the game, and how he doesn't want to. Uh, the lessons that he likes to teach young men um, are kind of going by the wayside because all the recruits care about is getting paid. 
uh, the Big T <laughs> was uh, was pretty fired up about that. So Big T, uh, was I? Yeah, you were online. You went viral. You would, you don't know because you don't have notifications. I I, I did see someone sent that tweet to me. I saw that had a lot of likes. That was the first I'd heard of it. Uh, oh, twenty seven thousand. Um, twenty seven thousand. Okay, hold on. But it's just are you whelmed by that? Read read the, yeah, read I don't the care. tweet. Um. Well, he was talking about how he said his wife mentioned to him, you know, why are we doing this? The kids don't care anymore. And I said, I wonder if she said this to him at their $11 million lake house or their $17 million beach house, <laughs> uh, two of their four homes. Uh, but it's just like his, his, the people who, and there was like strong pushback to people who were like people defending Sabin being yeah. like, well, these kids bring no value. Obviously, he has value. He's the winningest, you know, coach, whatever. Yeah, obviously, that's true. The players do bring value. They help you win, which is what the coaches need to do. Also, it's just like they they pretend that players weren't going where they were going to make the most money before. And that's not – maybe you got lucky enough to get a little bit of money under the table. Maybe you didn't. But players went to Alabama because they were prepared best to go to the NFL where they could make a shit ton of money. Yeah. Now you can make a shit ton of money in college, so players are going to prioritize that mm -hmm. instead of, you know, maybe you go somewhere where you're going to make $2 million a year in college instead of eight hundred grand that you probably wouldn't have gone to had – nil not been a thing and like they pretend to not understand this mm -hmm. and it's very very simple it is simple and the coaches that adapt to it are going to be the ones that succeed correct and, and nick saban's kind of like i'm he's so set in the way that he's always done things that it was always going to be very hard for him to adapt as as an older person to this new style but this will bother me about the motherfuckers bro nick saban uh what's the cat from clinton what's his name Dabo. Dabo. Sweeney. do we all these motherfuckers bro you like your fortune is built upon the backs of free labor. Like, that don't bother you at all, fam. And I'm not implicating slavery. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about real indentured servitude, bro. It don't bother you at all. And when these kids get a little bit of kick kickback, just a little bit, because they ain't getting paid still. They're just getting money off their name and likeness. They get a little bit of that back. And you over here talking about some of the sanctity of the game is getting... Like, fuck you, bro. Like, that, I, that type of shit makes me so angry, dog. Because, like, these kids is like, they made you. Yeah. They made you. All but you, you do is call in the play. <clears throat> these motherfuckers is executing. These motherfuckers got broken bones. These motherfuckers got ACLs, MCLs, shoulder surgery, back surgery. Like, all these niggas is breaking their backs. And you sitting in your, like Big T said, your lake house. And yeah. you talking about, they don't care anymore. Bitch, they trying to get paid like you. <laughs> Yeah, Fuck and, and you, like, man. a lot of players on the team won't even make it to the NFL. So, like, this is their saying. one chance to make some money. for. I know, cats, bro, I know cats that got injuries that going to last in their lifetime that they got in college, and they, and, they, and, they, and they fucked up for life. But, like, the head coaches and the assistant coaches, and they got all that money, but there's no, there's, there's no compensation for that. We talking about labor issues. Like this is this is the this is the problem. The this, other thing I don't see this as a labor issue that got me that Saban specifically mentioned yesterday was they do this under the guise of this is so bad for the game. The rich are going to get richer. The poor are going to get poor. One that's fundamentally untrue. It's you're <laughs> actually seeing a much more uh, the talent being far more dispersed than it ever has been because a team like. Mississippi State or, you know. A real shitty team uh, like that, yeah. Sure, not even a middle of the road in, mm -hmm. in Indiana, Purdue. They're going to be willing to pay a kid maybe like a, a low four-star way more than, say, Alabama is because Alabama doesn't really need that. That guy's going to be a depth piece there. You can shine at Indiana, and they're going to pay that kid more. There's been a f – the, the talent is going to be more evenly dispersed than it ever has been. Yeah. Agreed. What I – so when I see Nick Saban doing this, Big T, this is a great take by you. The whole shit, you just well done. Yeah. The 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 people that are opposed to all this seem to conflate what is a feature and what is a bug of the the system. And by the way, there's a you know, and people bitch about the transfer portal. There's a very easy fix to that. Also, never mind the fact that coaches have had free range of movement however they want. Make them employees Cook. with contracts and buyouts. Cook. That's what the coaches have. My man's so got if, a chef hat on right now. So, Cook. so if you want to fix the transfer portal, then you make them employees and give them a four-year contract with a $700,000 buyout. And if a team wants to buy them out of that, they're more than welcome to do that, but they have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yeah. I feel like you've been sitting in a layer concocting this argument for years. I really have it. It's it strikes I know. me I'm as, just as saying such it's, common it's, sense. I'm so impressed. It's, I'm with you. I'm with you a thousand percent, brother. It's like anything else in football. Like, yeah, if, if you are legally allowed to make money, you should be given multi-year contracts. That's good for the schools. Jay Billis made the same point. But like, give a player coming out of if you're a basketball player, give him a two-year deal if you think he wants to go to the NBA. Here's two years, but after those two or during those two years, you can't transfer anywhere else. You're you're going to be working for us as an employee. There's non-compete clause, just like anybody else in the workforce. Treat them the exact same way. To me, that that makes most sense. The funniest part about Nick Saban doing this is he could have like I understand his point of view that he's done this his way for so long. He is done adapting. He's already adapted his game. His like and that's actual, fine. Actual co- that's totally fine. Just say that. Just say it. But to go to Congress and be like, I want everybody that's going to play college football in the future to not be focused on money. That's kind of fucked up. Like sucker you don't. Move. You don't have to. Yeah, it is a sucker move. You're right. He's trying to like take money out of out of people's pockets in the future. Yeah, bro. But as long but as long as the co- like there ain't nobody. Pick it and coaches getting millions of dollars. Ain't nobody gonna pick it that shit though, huh? It's a fucking sucker, man. Fuck out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Pay the players. Pay them. You know what's yeah? You know what's kind of an indictment on how uh a college education has been devalued. You know what I'm saying? Like it used to be like, oh, you're getting an education that should be, you know, comp- like that should compensate you enough. But it just goes to show how like deflated the value of a college education has become yeah Yeah. because guy i don't think so okay i'm not going to delay this any further we're going to have billy's powerpoint presentation and his official announcement of running for congress in just a second he's brought to you by the rent app we've got something truly special for all the renters out there or if you're a landlord too paying rent it's something that we all have to do let's be honest it can sometimes be a bit of a hassle but what if there was a way to make it all easier more straightforward even beneficial for your financial future, introducing the Rent app. It's the ultimate tool for renters everywhere. The Rent app takes hassle out of paying rent by depositing your payments directly into your landlord's bank account. No more trips to the ATM, no more mailing checks, no more managing balances in multiple apps, just simple direct transactions that make life easier for both you and for your landlord. There are no fees, no weekly limits. That's right, the Rent app is completely free for you to use. No need for your landlord to create an account. It's completely free for them too. The Rent app is also about helping you build a brighter financial future by optionally reporting your on-time rent payments to the three major credit bureaus. The Rent app brings you one step closer to home ownership and it helps you boost your credit score. So why wait? Go to the App Store, download the Rent app today, and follow Rent app at Rent app at Bar or Rent app at Instagram and on Twitter. For our listeners, we have an exclusive deal. Go to rent.app/barstool, get fifty dollars cash back on your first rent payment. If you're a landlord, go to rent.app slash landlord to get paid on time and without hassle. Again, that's rent.app slash barstool, and you get $50 cash back on your first rent payment. That's a great deal. Check it out. All right, without further ado, I present to you for the first time potential future congressman, William Football. Billy, the floor is yours. Hi, my name is Bill Cotter and I'm running for Congress in New York's first congressional district. You may know me as Billy Football from Barstool Sports, and despite the playful banter with colleagues such as PFT Commenter, Big Cat, and even Arian Foster, I've come to understand the importance of dedication and the value of striving for something greater than oneself. I grew up in downstate New York, and contrary to what you may believe, New York's first district is a place dear to my heart, a place where, as some cultures may say, I became a man. Public service has always played a huge role in my life. In high school, I was the head of a charity helping felons get back on their feet in a halfway house and leading a national campaign to donate blood during the pandemic. Some of the first of my ancestors in this country served the Union right off the boat for the Civil War. The first U.S. prisoner of war was actually my ancestor. My academic and athletic exploits led me to Williams College, where I studied political economics. I am more qualified for this position than you may think. The camaraderie and challenges of collegiate level team sports instilled in me both a unique and deep appreciation for teamwork and an understanding of how to leverage diverse strengths and acknowledge the weaknesses of those around me. In life, I face more than a politician dodging a direct question at a press conference. Team sports taught me the importance of strategy and adaptability, qualities that are just as essential in the halls of Congress as on the football field or podcasting for that matter. 
Dave Portnoy once ran for mayor and paid the way for other Barstool employees to take part in public service. And in today's world of public service, it's becoming increasingly clear to me that what the United States Congress desperately needs is less self-serving individualism and more collaborative teamwork. Partisanship in Washington has reached alarming heights, rendering Congress less effective than ever before. That's precisely why I've decided to step up and run. When Uganda needed a football coach, what did I do? I stepped up and took a flight to Africa and assisted in spreading the good game of American football. This not only shows my ability to lead, but my ability to share my love of America with the world. Our nation, especially New York, is suffering under the weight of an inefficient government. From tax policy to immigration and border security, our needs are overlooked. Our voices are not heard. This isn't just about voting for me, Billy, into office. It's about making sure our concerns as New Yorkers are actively addressed and acted upon. Unfortunately, our government is a fiscally irresponsible operation, serving more as a money laundering platform for a governing class than as a steward of our nation's resources, paying closer attention to special interests than your interests. As the potential youngest member of Congress, I represent the generation that will inherit the consequences of this recklessness. I'm committed to tackling government with overspending, reevaluating our approach to immigration and tax policies, and ensuring we're not just passing the bill to future Americans, but are instead laying the groundwork for a sustainable future. Although I'll be representing New York's first district, I will also advocate for the many voices across our country that desperately need to be heard. I don't care if you are a Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, or Macrodosian. I will be a voice for you. With my background, I bring a fresh perspective to politics, one that values hard work, community, and the kind of team spirit that can transcend the current divides. It's time for us to rally together to turn our collective challenges into our victories. I'm committed to being the voice for all of us to bring about the change we desperately need. Let's make our district a model of what effective governance can look like when we choose unity over division, action over inaction. I hope you'll join me on this journey. Bill Football for Congress. And that is my uh, announcing statement. Okay. Um, um, if you'd like to know some of my policy points. Hey, uh, the bar in there, though, the bar in there was, you talking about uh, Congress now representing special interests and not your interests. That was that was a bar right there. I fucked with that one. Thank you. Yeah. So um, I, it sounds like you're running on the platform of I'm good. <laughs> Look, we can get into uh, the intricacies of my campaign, my beliefs, and uh, how I think I can help this country, uh, but specifically right. the first district of New York. A right, cu- couple questions right off the bat. Um, mm-hmm. Are you qualified in terms of the letter of the law to run for office in New York? Why don't we get to my uh, slideshow where I can show you okay. uh, many of these this information. So I'm going to try really to just share hit me with my a per my email. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, bring to it whom up. It may concern. And Billy, you're actually in front of a New York State flag and an American flag right now, an elector. I like that. Not exactly. But... Okay, first first order business for the campaign. As your advisor, we got to get you some sort of like photo licensing tool uh, to get rid of the watermarks. <laughs> a, Adobe stock. In <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is uh, one of the first points. Um, My slogan is, uh, if you are here year round, I'm here for you. That is specifically uh, going towards, you know, in my district, we are sometimes demeaningly referred to as a seasonal economy. Uh, I do not think that uh, the economic profits and boom and success of a region should ever be determined by seasonally. Um, We should be seasonally deserving of economic success year round. I think it would be extremely uh, short sighted to think of the region and say that we can only make money during the summer. I think uh, that's one of my first points. And I hope that my uh, slogan reflects that I care for, you know, not the Goldman Sachs uh, partner that owns tons of beachfront property, but the inland contractor who only can get work at certain times of the year and ends up working for people uh, who don't care about them. But I do. I think it's a miss. Um, I was really excited with PFT's slogan for you. What was his slogan? I'm taking it serious. <laughs> I am taking it seriously. Um, first see, question that's, I that's get a asked. banger. I am taking it seriously. 
I, I thought that was a, I thought that was a fire one. I think that more makes it about me and not a, my hopeful constituents in New York's first oh, district. Maybe all the Billy stands out there, they'll that will be something they latch on to. Yeah. First question I usually receive on uh, my running is, usually. "Am I eligible?" Wait, you? What do you mean? Usually, this you, you <laughs> just announced it <laughs> thirty <laughs> seconds ago. If, if you've seen, uh, <laughs> most questions have been. Am I eligible? Big T has asked, am I eligible? Dave Portnoy has asked, am I eligible? If you are looking at this, it is March 13th, 2024. And I am exactly 25 years and two months old. Clicking the first box. I've been a citizen for more than seven years. And I am a resident of the state uh, that I am running for. Mm -hmm. So the path to uh, the race first starts with getting enough signatures uh, to get on the ballot. Now, it is around uh, 1,250 signatures I need. I need the lesser of 4.5% of the last congressional vote or 1,250 signatures. Uh, 1,250 signatures is lesser. Uh, so that is the amount of signatures I would need to be an independent um, and also to run for the Republican Party. Uh, we are still strategizing which party to run under, um, but we are going to start by getting signatures. Um Moving on. I think this could be accomplished in a weekend. Um, I'm planning a rally, uh, not this weekend, but next weekend um, out in the Hamptons. Billy, I have a question real quick. Yes. Can I interject? Uh, so you're you're trying to decide whether you should run for the Republican nomination so you can go head to head with Santos for the nominate, excuse me, the nomination, or if you want to run as an independent which would ensure that you would get to election day running against George Santos, correct? I don't believe George Santos is going to make it that far. Um, And because of that, and because of the corruption we see in much of the government, I do not think that a established party will give me the chance to fully uh, enact my beliefs uh, for the future of this country. Okay. So wait, I I don't know if that answered my question. Um, If you're running as an independent, you would carry this through to election day if you're running against George Santos, when is the uh, the Republican primary? When is the big day? June 25th. Okay. So it's paperwork and getting in contact with the party. Uh, we have an incumbent who's Nick LaLota, uh, who has really had a, a very bad track record. Um, honestly, career politician. Um, and one of the things that I am rallying against. Okay. Because so we need being to- a politician should not be your full job. You should have life experience to be able to govern constituents who are not politicians. Billy, uh, if I may interject, what would you say your life experience is that you're running with? Uh, Dealing with mass amounts of people, um, (laughs) decision-making. I'm young. I honestly think that my uh, point of view as a young person who's been saddled with a country that has been basically ruined and uh, taken advantage of by the last generation. I'm trying to represent the viewpoints and hopes for a new future. Okay. Uh, also, Billy, I don't, think don't my, let Big T talk I think to you the like value that. Billy, of Billy's my experience. Put in, you've put in six years in the content minds. All right. You, you, your hands are calloused from the blogs that you've written. Seven, <laughs> seven years in content. Um, but I've, you know, honestly, I do think that, uh, it's in our country's best interest to get younger lawmakers and lack of experience. I don't think will impact, uh, my performance. Cause if you see, we have people in Congress who've been there for 30 years and do you think things are going well, big T do you think their experience actually helps this nation or turns this nation into a nation of filibuster? I don't the know. only don't experience they me? have in is getting paid. The only experience these congressmen have who've been in there for a long time is figuring out how their seat in Congress can get them the most money. And guess what? If that means my inexperience gets me less money, I don't care. And why do I think it's possible that I can run for Congress, make it, win, and perform for the American people and my constituents, most importantly? I am the spiritual legacy of Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> This is another great tagline. You have to watch, you have to watch the the YouTube spirit. because the, another great tagline for your campaign is this is possible. 
This is possible. I am the spiritual legacy. We might do it. (laughs) Yes, we might. (laughs) Look, say what you want. This is possible. It's it's the Obama. My determination says maybe. (laughs) Could. (laughs) You laugh. You laugh. No, I. I, When I'm there, when I'm there, I'll remember this laughter, and I'll play it back to you. What does that mean? I like it. No, chip on your shoulder, Billy. Why am I running? These are my four most important points, which really inspired me to run for Congress. Old politicians are overspending and leaving young people with insurmountable debt. Every city has become a border city and national security is at risk. Love that. The future of young New Yorkers and their families is at risk due to housing crisis and unjust tax laws, both during and In the aftermath of the pandemic, the opioid epidemic has proliferated. Innovative strategies are needed to avert furthering the national health crisis. So on our first point, Mm -hmm. fiscal overspending, the U.S. government has become a physically irresponsible money laundering operation for a governing class. And if elected as the youngest member of Congress, I will represent the generation that is being left paying the bill and mitigate the disaster ahead. We are $34 trillion in debt. And the reason why our government has gone to debt as opposed to paying debts uh, is because it does not impact the current individuals in the government, but yet saddles our children with the responsibility of paying this back. And yes, I understand some debt is good debt, but I do not think $34 trillion of debt, which will eclipse our ability to pay the interest payments Eclipsing our GDP, we will get to the point where our GB- GDP is lower than our interest payments. And what that means is we're in big trouble. And we uh, I will not allow the country to be foreclosed on. Would would like China come in here and like nail a, uh, an eviction notice to the Statue of Liberty and be like, you guys got to go? We do owe a lot of money to China, but we actually owe the most money to the American people. So not only are they borrowing money and not paying it back, but they are borrowing from the same people they're supposed to serve. It's mostly U.S. pension funds. Hmm. I like it. Billy's got a nice streak of populism in him, doesn't he? Like he turns everything back to the people. Yeah. On the border, uh, we need to treat the border. New York is now a border state. We are dealing with uh, the impacts of crime, drugs, just as much as states that are actually on the border. Every state has now become a border state. We have seen uh, Venezuelan gangs flooding into our state, causing more crime than we've seen in the past years. Uh, More organized violent crime exported from a country that uh, has been in a civil war for many years, small time civil war. Uh, The cartel basically controls our border. No one crosses the border illegally without the cartel's influence leading to a lot of drugs being taken by military age males into our country. Not only that, we have foreign agents of hostile nations walking over our border. We recently had a border patrol agent testify in front of Congress uh, regarding the amount of Chinese nationals uh, that have been identified taking pretty (sighs) complimentary routes into the country, almost seemingly coordinated. We need to stop the flow of migration from a point of making sure that immigrants know they are not welcome at the border to engage illegally and enter illegally into the country. We need to allow uh, states to control their own borders to their own decree because it is their right to defend their land and their property from uh, individuals coming into the border. Um, But this is not against legal immigration. This is against immigration as a whole. I think immigrants are the foundation of this nation. As I said in my speech, Every single one of my ancestors were immigrants to this land, as are most of us. All right, Billy, I'm, all... I'm just to get ahead of a question that you will, you will be asked about that, um, did they all immigrate legally? Yes, there's papers for all of them. Okay. They're in Ellis Island. Okay. And they got those papers by serving this country in the Civil War or the Revolution, mostly. How are you going to stop the flow of migrants? We need to indicate to the world that we are not just letting people in willy nilly. Our border is not a doormat. Uh, And by doing that, when you stop some of the 
uh, complementary programs that attract a lot of immigrants to our country uh, by just basically saying, hey, you get $300 on a credit card and a place to live in New York City if you get here. That is not going to disincentivize people from coming, and it takes away social welfare resources from actual citizens of our state and country. Why am I seeing someone begging on the street, a veteran, uh, a single mother, asking for money when people who just show up on our doorstep are immediately getting credit cards with $300, and there's people on the street who are U.S. citizens who may have paid taxes in the past who have uh, papers to be citizens of this country who are voters being treated worse than unwelcome guests. If, How, I, if I lived in this district, there's like a non-zero chance I'd vote for this. <laughs> How are you going to project strength, Billy? I need, I need to hear more about your strategy. I think a lot of our leadership has projected weakness to the world. I think this can be seen in a vast majority of foreign conflicts. Uh, America is considered weak right now, and I want to make America strong again. Okay, but again, like how how are you planning on projecting strength? I do think I probably have the highest bench press in Congress if elected. <laughs> <laughs> I think my squad is also the highest in Congress if elected. Um, but we will see. Uh, I saw AOC um, recently. Also, Billy, just a just a suggestion: every state is a border state. That needs to be a T-shirt. Yeah. Every state is a border state. We're all dealing with the impacts of illegal immigration. Make America Billy again. <laughs> Next slide. This is one of the most oh, okay. uh, issues. This is one of the most important issues in my campaign. Strength. Fostering new generations of Americans. So the tax code and especially our housing laws do not foster uh, the growth of families and individuals, young Americans, of uh, to have a fruitful future. Our tax code benefits uh, our governing class, this hyper wealthy corporate elite who do not pay as much taxes as they are reaping from our economy. Uh, small time business owners, uh, independent contractors, uh, people who work paycheck to paycheck are being taxed more by percentage than some of the largest uh, corporations that benefit from our uh ecosystem, uh, mostly our infrastructure, uh, then we should allow. We need to go after uh, individuals with offshore bank accounts, private institutions with billions in untaxed endowments. Uh, I personally think any academic institution with larger than one billion uh, should be taxed. This won't go after a well-meaning, small, uh, needy academic institutions that usually help uh, underprivileged uh, groups and children's, but rather places like Harvard University that have close to 50 billion in endowment that they just grow and grow every year and use their tax haven status to benefit from. Um, but also we're facing a housing crisis. And a lot of this has to do with some of our financial uh, legislation when it comes to rates uh, interest rates, in which are being raised because of the inflationary uh, practices we've been passing, we've been giving out tons of money, printing tons of money, and the only way people are, the government has tried to stop that is by raising housing, uh, raising interest rates in order to stop the flow of money to the people who actually need it the most in this country. Uh, we need to work with co colleagues of all parties to address problems with anti-squatting laws, which is a huge problem in New York State. Um, we need to incentivize communities and state governments to develop affordable housing options and be pro-housing. There are so many planning boards across New York State, especially in our district, as well as the country, that are not pro-housing in a time where American families, especially young families, need to buy housing. If we're going to start fostering the next generation of Americans, hey, we bud. need them to have houses hey, to bud. live in. So I'm going to keep we, it a beam, man. Wrap this shit up. Okay, well, you are not a fan of my policies. And guess what? This is my just, campaign. This is long, fast. God damn, we need to get Fannie and Freddie to develop minutes, financial guys. products to encourage <clears throat> housing development. So, a, a, last wait, point. Wait, Billy, you said that you you are in favor of like taxing colleges, institutions like that, right? That are exempt from the tax code and they've got large endowments. I'm not opposed to that. I think that's, that might be a good idea. Maybe like an elevator pitch. Like, you, you I'm laying for out Congressman. You're not my... running for president. 
Well, no, that, this is this can this impact long. But, but, but Billy, well, we're we're I, almost I alone we're here? almost I'm wrapping alone it up. Here. But Billy, okay, you want to hear the show? Wait, 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 wait Billy. It, okay, so you're gonna be taxing. I'm fucking up. You're gonna be taxing uh, colleges, universities. Would you also carry that same policy to religious institutions that are also exempt? I think we need to analyze uh, some of these religious institutions and determine whether they are for profit or if they are actually non for profit chair doing charitable work and sort of see where the money is going. I think some of these institutions, there are actually individuals. I'm going to hold my tongue moving on. Okay. <laughs> the opioid crisis uh, has not been solved. We made great progress before the pandemic, but the pan pandemic caused a huge problem. We need to make sure that there's Narcan in every school. 1,200 high schoolers a year die of overdoses. And if there was Narcan in high schools, in uh, health kits and emergency Red Cross uh, packages in the schools, we could save a lot of lives. Okay. Uh, part of this is securing the border. And we need to go for harsher financial penalties against pharmaceutical companies that helped cause the opioid crisis and we have to create accessible safe injection and drug testing sites uh to sort of foster because the war on drugs has not worked and we need to legalize ibogaine treatment in the united states which is one of the most effective treatments for addiction um deficits in congress i can supplement i'm technologically literate unbiased decision making genuine love for humanity and country and i will actually hold town halls and not be afraid to be held accountable and i won't just spend my time in congress Sitting and dining with lobbyists and special interest groups. Now for some of my more radical. Wait, wait, ideas. wait, 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 Billy. This, go back, go back. This is a great slide. This is a fantastic slide. Might be my favorite one yet. Under under your bullet for unbiased decision making. I have zero allegiance to any ideology. Oh, I that's not the best bullet point under that. I, I know, I know. And then there's another one. Uh, special interest groups cannot buy me. I do not deal in power. And no, all caps. No one has ever figured out how to break me. <laughs> and no, no one is one word. Except for the Kenyan football team, PFT, Big Cat. Uh... They have not broken my spirit. Why is they... no one one word, bro? The combine. <laughs> yeah, it's small type of. Small type yeah, Francis. <laughs> no one has ever broken me. Francis has not broken me. Big T, you will not break me. I'm unbroken. <laughs> Now, so for some of my more aggressive policies, I will seek uh, take fluoride out of the water and put creatine in. Okay, I think that will make America strong again and uh, make us project strength on a international scale. Okay, I want to investigate the origin and cure for tick-borne illnesses. This is a huge problem in New York's first district. Lyme disease uh, and alpha gal is running rampant on Long Island, and I want to institute deer hunting unlimited. So I want an open season on deer year round. You can hunt on any land. You can use any weapon. We're killing the deer. <laughs> we are going to destroy the, the deer. deer population that has been unchecked for decades. <laughs> and by doing that, we will help curb the tick population. <laughs> the deer have had too good for too long. <laughs> and for those uh, only listening, Billy has inserted a an icon from the App Store of a game <laughs> called Deer Hunting Unlimited that very clearly has the rounded edges of an Apple app. Well, guess what? We're just running with it. Yeah, deer uh, hunting. I like it. Deer Hunting Unlimited. It's on site for every deer. You can kill Congress? any deer you want, any way you want, <laughs> however you want it. You can butcher it. There's no tags, no season. We're killing all the deer, at least in my constituency. Big deer has been too powerful of a special interest group in Congress. Ever since we killed all the large predators, deer have been reproducing at a rate that we cannot control, and it's caused these tick-borne illnesses. Or did the government create Lyme disease and alpha gal? So you're just say, we got to investigate it. When you say Boy, just did a pivot. <laughs> when you say that, like you can kill any deer. Any way that you want. You mean like if you see a deer, like drive your car off the road, run it over, like like this is this is some like real shit. This is our biggest yeah. ride. Okay, this is on site with any deer, doe, fawn, big <laughs> buck, doesn't matter. No horns, horns, kill any deer. He's running on the fuck Bambi platform. <laughs> yeah, baby, baby deer as well. Baby deer as well. If you want to wrestle a baby deer and snap its neck with your bare hands, that's legal as long as it curtails the population. Holy shit. <laughs> What's the uh, what's the reason? Though? Why don't we like deer? Because they cause uh, tick-borne illnesses, which have been impacting the New York's first district, second district, and third district, 
in a way that we have never seen before. People's lives have been ruined by Lyme's disease, uh, ruined by alpha gal. Um, and we need to stop it. Yeah. I only know one guy who got that and he was completely fine. Well, that's because he used a revolutionary treatment, which was actually, uh, advised by his campaign manager originally. And that is how he got the job. <laughs> Another very important issue to my district. Uh, we need to investigate the Montauk monster. Montauk, a town in my constituency. We need to investigate what exactly happened. Where did the body go? And uh, who put it there? And what is it? Did we already figure it's that out? It's not just a raccoon. It's not just a bloated raccoon. Okay. Last slide. I will be shot <laughs> if I'm elected to Congress. <laughs> Because they can't control me. And like many of these people we see in this slide who have been shot, they all believed in something that got them killed. And I believe in the right thing and the wrong people will want me dead. And that... Wait, is this a ends, promise? Is this a promise that you will be shot? I will be shot. There will be people <laughs> who say, we can't control him. He actually cares about America and the American people and his constituency. And he should be dead because he is not voting for a huge spending bill on some foreign war or some crazy, you know, back pocket deal to get Nancy Pelosi paid. And I will be shot. All right. Just like they shot the Boeing guy. Uh, yeah. So you, you are not you have no intentions of self-harm. No intentions. OK, got it. For the record, I want to make that clear. So you said no, no funding foreign wars. So you were cutting off all the money to Ukraine and Israel. Look, I'm just saying I won't sign <laughs> crazy bills. Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm if I'm shot, it's because I was doing the right thing. OK, your intention, your intention. Look, look at these guys who've been shot. Yeah. Uh, what, Abraham Lincoln. Why would you pick that picture of, of the Kennedy assassination, Billy? <laughs> uh, I think it was the best one to show JFK's face after being shot. OK. All right. Just just curious about that. <laughs> I've actually never seen that picture before. Um, it's quite the picture. All right. Is this it, Billy? Yes. And that is my presentation. All right. Um, let's open up the floor for questions. I know that we've, we've had several as this goes on. I like, I hope that was a good balance of policy and humor. Yeah. And I hope for those listening, you take the policy seriously as I am taking this campaign and the humor in jest. Okay, what about where does no deer, where does the attack deer fall on that scale? I think that a lot of victims of uh, Lyme disease would agree. Okay, that's policy. That's policy. Okay, <laughs> just there, there are a couple that we have to make the distinction between. Um, I like your fire, Billy. I think hopefully we'll see that young leaders like me will help direct this nation into a new positive future. I also like the fact that you're going to be running in against George Santos. I like that's that's very admirable because um, as we've said, to beat a liar, you have to use a liar. And Billy is our own in-house homegrown George Santos. This is no lab leak George Santos. I'm gonna this be is honest, naturally I haven't produced. lied about anything close to what George Santos has lied about. But given the opportunity. Given the opportunity, I what like what 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 would I lie about? Where's oh. no tell, man. <laughs> Hey, you'd this, find it. You'd find something. Yeah. Like, for example, the 311 thing where I was like, I didn't say that was I was meaning that not all music that is good needs to be played in a weight room. I was saying usually the grungy rock music that goes a long time gets played in the weight room. And that's why it's long that play. It plays well for a long time. Like, you know, like funk music and disco music doesn't get played in the radio, but it is timeless. It doesn't have to be played in the weight room, but usually the music that 311 is does because of that. Mm -hmm. That was my point. I can clear up a lot of points like this. Um, Billy, I have a question. So you're likely going to be running in the Republican primary. What would you say to voters who might be uh, slightly disillusioned with the fact that you attended one of the most leftist colleges in America? I think uh, it's an advantage. I've faced liberalism in its purest form, leftist uh, ideologies right in the face. I was told that a fork was toxic masculinity of uh, Western civilization because the reason why uh, we use forks and knives in Western civilization is because we come from a uh, culture of violence. And it is even in our eating in which we are cutting and stabbing, showing our uh, uh, extremely aggressive, violent 
uh, attitudes towards the world as opposed to Eastern cul culinary tools, which are delicate and based on a very vegetarian diet. And sometimes in the Western high protein, high animal meat diet uh, and animal product diet is uh, the earmarks of our exploitative uh, attitude towards the world. Uh, if that sounds ridiculous to you, that means that's, it was, was ridiculous to mine. Um, so I saw all sorts of leftist ideology from the farthest points of the left. Um, and I know how to combat it and ensure that our country is still heading in the right direction. All right. Uh, drugs. You talked about the, the opioid crisis. You talked about going after big pharma. Um, what are your thoughts on marijuana? Um. I'm in a state where marijuana has been decriminalized and recreationally legal. I think that the verdict is out that uh, marijuana does not harm individuals and has institutionally, the war on marijuana has institutionally harmed more individuals um, running in a blue state. I think uh, my stance on marijuana being totally fine, taxable uh, is an advantage. And uh, I am pro marijuana, but I do think we need to use some of the tax dollars from marijuana sales to study the impact of uh, mental health uh, and uh, infertility. Okay. What about what about mids? Has we gotten too strong? There is the impact of a uh, high THC uh, potent marijuana on young males' brains, causing a, a dissociation and schizophrenia. And I think that we need to use the tax dollars. Uh, to help fight the mental health crisis in this country, also, which is the basis of many of our problems. As your advisor, bring back mids. That's a good tagline. I'll use it, maybe. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so we, we covered marijuana. And can I give you some some additional advice as your advisor? Who said you're my advisor? I did. I did. Um, just say I want to legalize marijuana federally. I will vote for that when we get to it in the House. Okay, so you would vote for a federally, uh, like to end the federal ban on marijuana? I'd have to see the bill. I'd have to see the uh, the small print in the bill to see where the money from the taxation uh, is going. Uh, and hopefully it's going to you know social welfare and helping mm -hmm. uh, the well-being of this nation. But you're not a poet. You want, I'm trying to help you out here, Billy. This is a way to stand out. Legalize it. I'd federally legalize weed if I was in the house. I'd vote for a federal bill to legalize weed. Okay, I like it. I like it. And a reasonable bill. What about health care, Billy? Um, so my health care plan, <laughs> um, besides putting creed, I have a health care plan. plan. Okay. Um, if you want to hear my plan, uh, I let do. me. I, I have it in my notes. I knew this would come up. So we would basically try to expand coverage as much as we can. Um, we're going to try to uh, ensure coverage and access and dedicate to not just providing every American with health care coverage, but also ensuring real access to actual medical service for all. Uh, we need to protect the vulnerable and seniors. Uh, we need a functional safety net, making sure Medicaid delivers quality care. I'll stand firm against any cuts to Medicare protecting our seniors. We also need to promote healthy lifestyles. Healthcare is more than just visits to the doctor. I'll champion for health savings accounts and tax benefits to cover gym memberships and promote wellness. Uh, we need also address environmental health. Um, committed to securing grants for state and local governments to tackle the social determinants of health, ensuring everything from clean pipes and drinking water to safe and modern schools for our kids. Kids spend most of their time in schools. The schools need to be a healthy environment. We also need to work on innovation. Uh, I will work to cut red tape so that innovation can happen in healthcare. America must lead in cures, treatments, and devices. Uh, and also, this is part of the multifaceted approach, but lastly, mental health. Mental health is critical component of overall well-being, I will work to integrate mental health more effectively into our healthcare system and remove the stigma associated with mental health treatment. This is part of the plan. We need to expand access, expand affordability, and expand treatment for all. I love how you're just talking like a congressperson now. Like it's already gone to uh, your head, this power. I love it. What uh, so my, uh, the power that I give the people in my constituency <laughs> by being the voice for the unheard. Yep. So uh, my mother just, her social security just kicked in 
and she was upset to find out that uh, that is being taxed. What do you feel about Social Security being taxed? Well, uh, if I'm correct, uh, the Social Security tax was put in uh, when it was originally drafted. And because of how Social Security works, he's been having unrealized gains uh, until your mother withdrew it. And like all Americans uh, who invest their money, uh, and unfortunately, I mean, the government invested the Social Security money for us and hopefully gave good returns, uh, they need to tax it. Um, I will look into the tax code as it impacts Social Security and ensure the correct choice that uh, benefits Americans occurs. If Social Security is your only source of income, I think we might want to cut taxes on Social Security because uh, if you have no other income stream, that shouldn't be taken away from you. If you're making money on the side, besides Social Security, we'll see how much you should be taxed on that. It's really a person by person basis. And I don't know the exact uh, specifications behind your mother's situation, but we'll, we'll see what works. Got you. And recently, um, uh, there's a, uh, a right leaning, uh, you know, political talking head who the, the social security age should be raised. It is currently at 65. Do you agree or disagree? Well, uh, Something that is also raised is human life expectancy. Uh, since the bill first came out, Social Security was established. I think we will once again have to look at a person by person basis. I think retired Americans uh, should definitely be uh, able to get Social Security. Um, but if you are still ready, willing, and able to work and have other income streams, we will see if that should extend your access to Social Security. And uh, it's a person by person basis. So we'll have to. This could be one by one. It. They're going to walk into your office. You'll be like, yep. No, no. Yep. You look pretty healthy. No. <laughs> I think with a bipartisan approach, we'll definitely be able to uh, tackle this issue and uh, hopefully have the best outcome for every American. All right. As your advisor, I'm going to chime in again. When somebody asks you anything related to Social Security, uh, just say we're not touching it. Old old people That's love their Social Security. And they they vote. They do. True. To say we're not they, touching it. We're not going to touch it. It's the largest voting base, isn't it? Yeah, we're not going to touch it. You're going to get it. We'll give you more. Yeah, suck up to the olds a little bit more, Billy. <laughs> to the olds? <laughs> <laughs> uh, sports gambling, Billy. Uh, legal. Responsibly. Legally responsibly. Okay. Federally legal. I will federally legalize sports gambling. Uh, Roe v. Wade. Abortion. Mm. Billy, talk to me about abortion. I'm not familiar uh, with, that with that bout. <laughs> um, that bout? The bout is it, of abortion? Is it being, oh, yes, Roe v. Wade. Um, look, I think that's a Supreme Court decision. Um, I don't think we'll be voting on anything related to it uh, in the House anytime soon. Okay, but, but uh, when there, it comes across my guess, I will confront it. Okay, um, there there has been talk of a uh, an amendment or a federal law being passed that um would kind of go against what sorry my campaign manager is calling me one second oh. okay hi. <laughs> hi what do i say about abortion um, um yes they are like to say to him no no i'm saying that's okay what billy's gonna say to all right campaign oh, manager. he should say that all right Everyone all right next question to choose all right so so billy here's the thing is um there is talk of a federal next question there is talk of a federal bill that would be going to congress um that would actually codify. Um, We'd have to just see what's in the bill. Okay. There's a lot of stuff in this bill. A federal, there's a border, a federal there's abortion, a border bill. A federal there's a border bill that a, included a, Ukraine funding. A federal we just see abortion what's in the bill. ban. Are you in favor of a federal abortion ban? We just got to see what's in the bill. Are you in favor of the right to choose? Or are you in favor of the government This is important saying, for your constituents to know where you stand on the issue. Yeah. The, the, the federal government saying that no one can have an abortion. Which one? I think there's a common sense solution to a lot of these problems. And unfortunately, uh, things get uh, polarized. What is the common uh, sense solution? The common sense approach is definitely the most appropriate. Which is what? Which one? You know, common sense approach. What would that be? 
uh, let me consult with my advisors and I will get back to you on a common sense approach. Common sense means multiple people weighing in. So he has to talk to, <laughs> you didn't think through what your abortion stance was going to be. Billy, I, I think it's a very individual, as we say, everyone has a, a individual situation and whatever the best decision for them, I think they should choose. Oh, so got it. Okay. That sounded like pro choice. Yeah. Pro choice. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's, you know, just like Billy's platform is like, you can have an abortion if you want it, but like, I don't like the idea of people having abortions. It, no, it no. It's more like, out. you know, just like be respond, like, you know, just get, make sure don't, don't make late decisions. Just, you know, whatever you're going to do, just make sure you're on top of it. Did you, part oh, of being a politician is you got to take a stance. And you got to believe in what you believe in. Because I think people, in my, when people think, look to when people look to politics, that's what they look for is this guy believes in that and he gonna fight for my voice to be heard in Washington. So like, take a stance, bro. I'm extremely, you know, I'm a, my constituents are very socially liberal, uh, fiscally uh, conservative, and I I represent their opinions. He said he did say very clearly he has no ideology. <laughs> <laughs> they will shoot me for my ability to rationally think and make the best decisions depending on the situation no billy you think too rational your <laughs> your policies are too clear they'll kill you <laughs> yeah no that's that's what happens no billy <laughs> Oh, Miss Peaches. Where'd I was going to say, you sound like Dave Miss, talking to Miss Peaches. The, that's the, yeah. the Twitter meme. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your swag too good. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Peaches ain't the room. Your bitch is too strong. Though. Anyway, um, so if any of you are willing to donate to my campaign, uh, the maximum gift is uh, $2,500. Um, so, you know, I do need to file with um, the elections committee. Uh, the National Elections Committee, and to get this going, uh, so I can start printing out the paperwork uh, to get the signatures and to start planning my rally, which will be the weekend of not the sixteenth. Wait, it's not. But it's not March Madness weekend, is it? It is. It, it will be at a bar, uh, okay. watching March Madness. It will be the weekend of the twenty third, uh, out. Uh, in the Hamptons, in that far part of Long Island. Uh, TBD, we're going to find a bar uh, and hopefully show up. Um, we're going to work something out where maybe you, if you sign, you get a free beer. You can't have a free beer before you sign because technically that means the document is non-binding. Um, <laughs> that might be a violation of the elections committee. Uh, I need to review the rules, so okay. don't hold me to that. All right. Um uh, Billy. So hopefully you can get some signatures and uh, have a good time watching some basketball. All right. What is the what is the filing process like? Um, it is well. First, I have to file with the elections committee. Uh, then I have to go through a second hoop to run with the Republicans. Uh, independent uh, run would be the easiest um, path. Do you think, to Billy? Do you think you could election. get a, a higher percentage of the vote in your district than Aaron Rodgers would get as a vice presidential? nominee nationwide yes you know why there's a military base and i know a couple of the fighter pilots from there okay and so they're already to... they're already ra rounding up the troops for lack of a better term and uh they're coming out <laughs> and uh we're, we're gonna throw a party that weekend um for the rally hopefully get a bunch of signatures hopefully hit our 1200 mark and uh those are voters they get to vote because they live on base all right, Billy, if Aaron runs for vice president and you run for Congress in the election, you guys will be going head to head. If you win, I I have to figure out what, what I would give you, but I want to incentivize you. What would incentivize Billy football to beat Aaron Rodgers? Um, I'm actually sort of disappointed with Aaron Rodgers announcing his candidacy uh, around the same time I announced my candidacy. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, when you're doing a campaign just basically for publicity uh, like he is um, and not actually caring about the constituents and, uh, you know, getting America in a better spot. Would you quit federal office to play quarterback for the New York Jets? No. Okay. All right. So 
Jets fans, you should vote for Billy because he's promising he will not be your quarterback. That actually worries me about his decision making if I was a constituent. <laughs> no, I like that though because like Billy Football being the quarterback for the New York Jets would be a night. The guy can't even beat Kenya. So he's not going to play for the Jets <laughs> oh, for just, a. Wait, a, just wait till you see the second Kenyan game. I was throwing fucking dimes, dude. He already I can't said wait to he drop that run. Hey, tape. hey, his whole, his whole congressional stick went out the window. You criticize the football player. <laughs> he's just fucking throwing dimes. No one's bro. broken him, though. You can't break him. <laughs> <laughs> Kenya's not broken me. <laughs> Kenya wants me to play for them, but I won't. I cannot be broken and cannot be swayed by the amount of money in Kenyan uh, shillings I was offered to play for Kenya. They offered you bread. Yeah, dude. I'm a high. <laughs> I'm a free agent. I'm a big one. deal in East African football. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're throwing the bag at me, but, he's but I'm, loyal. I'm not biting. <laughs> I'm loyal to Uganda. All right, your accent. I think your accent snuck back in right there. <laughs> well, because I'm pronouncing Uganda right. All right, um, it's Kenya, Billy. Uh, thank you very much for that presentation. I think we all learned a lot. Mad Dog McKenzie, do you guys have any questions? I don't think so. I don't, for me, I don't think I want to ask. <laughs> you can, you can. I mean, I'd love to hear from some possible female, female voters. voters? Mm -hmm. um, how will you sway the female vote? A lot of this, I feel like, doesn't have females in mind. Well. I feel like this is a lot. A lot of your policies just help you and your you type of people. You think his deer strangulation policy doesn't help women? <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding me? I mean, I guess if have women seen... are getting alpha gal like Billy does, but I, I mean, have you seen my uh, proposed policies towards housing? I mean, women need houses too. It's twenty twenty four. What about point. tampons, Billy? Would you put tampons? No taxes. No taxes on tampons. Oh, what oh. about free? No, no more actually, you know what? Women will not have to pay state or local taxes in uh, my district. Got it. Um, it female owned businesses will not have to pay state or local taxes. Nice. For the women, though. Wait, women in general yeah. don't have to pay taxes? Under the my taxes plan. being a woman. That's actually. That's a good one. Is the, is the Bordy Barn in your district? I think it is. Yes. McKenzie's I feel like in. you should open it every day, not just Sunday. Mm. We'll do that. Okay, I don't even got it. know what it is. So free tampons in every thing? every public bathroom? Oh, no, I do know the Bordy Barn. I've, I've been there. Okay. Free tampons. Um, wait, who's paying for free, that? Uh, uh, the men's taxes, I guess. No, we're going to. That's up to Billy. We're, oh, he just lost my vote. <laughs> no, no, we're going to. We're going to. No taxes on tampons. But free tampons in public bathrooms, though. Or question I'm asking. Yeah, free free tampons in public bathrooms. Okay. What about free Plan B in public bathrooms? That's a that's also sweeping the nation. Just because it's a controlled substance, and I think uh, there's a high overdose rate. Um, we're we're gonna, we're gonna walk that back. Yeah. Got it. Is that true? I don't think. Yeah, like a lot of well, women you know, are bitches out here free basing Plan B. Yeah, I don't know about that one. <laughs> no, I would like to see some do, numbers what, on that. Well, you know what we're gonna do is we're gonna expand. Uh, under the health code, we're going to make sure that there's a uh, health care for all uh, easily accessible. Cool. Mm -hmm. That was very specific. I love that. We'll give out, we'll give out vouchers for plan B. So they can go to a distributor. Got it. Okay. Cool. Free condoms for dudes. Mm -hmm. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> okay. no. De definitely not. It doesn't feel, <laughs> Billy football. It doesn't feel as good. No, <laughs> no. Do you, do you want me to give the men condoms, or is that sexist? that's up to you? It's up is to that you. giving them like they're only allowed? Is that sexist? <laughs> no. That's sexist. Why they shouldn't get any free stuff? No taxes on condoms. No taxes on birth control in general. I don't. Okay. Just overall, yeah. Overall, anything. Any. Yeah. Do you think tampons are birth control? Um, new balances, no taxes. <laughs> I think Billy thinks tampons are birth control. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm saying the other stuff. <laughs> All right, Billy. Uh, Thank you for answering our questions. We appreciate it, Billy. Great presentation. Um, I mean, let me it. let me jump in real quick. Cool. We've this. got Dave. They, of course, 
Oh, they're coming. We got Dave joined the stream. So yeah, let's just let let him in. We'll cut it. Ah, oh, he's got to see me like this. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> with, with a suit on. <laughs> Remember about the t-shirt too, Billy. Oh you yeah. Can ask that at you the end. About to, hold on. We get to, are we about to see a whole new Billy because Dave on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Is this so fun? Like the teacher walk back in the room? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is about to be funny as hell. Okay. All right, welcome on a very special guest to Macrodosing. It's Dave Portnoy. It's Dave. Dave's here. And um, we're announcing today, Dave, that Billy is running for Congress in George Santos's district, or excuse me, the same district that he's running for uh, for this election cycle, the New York 1st District, which I believe you've spent some time there, Dave. It's, it's like the Hamptons, that... That area. Oh, is that what? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know what district. So yeah, yeah, I'm familiar. Yeah. So we figure to uh, to beat a liar, you have to you have to fight him with a liar. So we have <laughs> we have Billy, and I think he fits that case pretty good. Um, so he's he's very excited about this. But we're doing a full episode on uh, on outsiders that have run for public office before, and you have firsthand experience. So I was hoping that you could walk us through your uh, your bid for mayor, and maybe we can learn some lessons from that in Billy football's candidacy and maybe one day end up with Congressman football. All right. Yeah. I didn't know Santos is running again. I, yeah. You, so you can get, you can get the boot and then you can just run again. I guess He's so. going after the guy who gave him the boot. He's not even rerunning in his own district. Hmm. I'm a Santos guy for better or for worse, but uh, all right. So yeah, I ran for mayor. I, this spawned, because back in the day, we were doing uh, what the Barcel Blackout Tour, which was like concert series, and we were getting persecuted in Boston. Like, we just... And basically, the Blackout Tour is EDM music. And the mayor decided he hated us. So if you went to one of our concerts and we had a line of kids, like, we sold out the House of Blues like five straight days. One day, BC, Northeastern, BU... And the police would come and they breathalyze everybody in line before they even got in. And if the place had 2,500 tickets, 200 of those people would get in. Next day, there'd be another EDM show, no problem. So I got mad at the city and I was like, I'm going to run for mayor. They're not business friendly. Uh, I did take it seriously. I basically said, so you had to get signatures to get on the ballot. And I want to say I needed like... 12,000, that number could be off. Whatever the rule is, you needed a bunch of signatures. I raised money and hired a, a agency that their main purpose was to get signatures. So we paid them all the money and they went to the street of Boston getting signatures for me. The way it worked in New York, I mean, in Boston, which made it a little complicated, in order to be a valid signature, you had to live in the city that you were voting and you couldn't sign twice. So if another candidate got you, you theoretically didn't count. What this ended up meaning is the mayor's office could basically, they're the ones who went through and they're like, this is a real signature or not. And they disqualified me. I had, I turned in 30,000 signatures or whatever. Like this was a, th this is all they did, this company. They get signatures to get people on the ballot and they basically could disqualify a signature by saying, A, they couldn't read it. B, the person signed twice. C, they weren't in the district as a registered voter. And there's no oversight. So if I needed 12,000, they basically came back and like, sorry, Dave, you got 11,500. Uh -huh. You can't be on the ballot. So I never made it to the ballot. I thought I could win, by the way. That sounds very crooked that they did that to you. Very crooked. And so unfair. crooked. Uh, it was widely crooked. I was a real threat because I looked into it and I could in, I could get all the kids who went to college as registered voters. They would have counted if they signed up. So I and I looked how many votes like Menino at the time who passed, how many they were getting to win. And it wasn't a ton. So I like thought I had a legit chance. By the way, I'm glad I didn't win. There would have been a disaster. But <laughs> I was very much like, oh, I got a shot at this thing. Yeah, what would have been your platform? What did you tell people? It my platform was primarily um pro business, keep the bars open later. And at the time, like I thought Boston was very anti-friendly for young like people go to college in Boston. 
and then they migrate. They weren't staying there after they graduated because there weren't a, it, the job market wasn't overly attractive. So I was trying to be like, let's be beneficial. Let's let's entice businesses here. Let's open the bars. Let's make it more friendly for a younger city. Mm -hmm. And was Hank involved at all in your campaign, or was that before no. Hank? No, it was no Hank was there. I had weird haircut Seth, right? Weird haircut Seth may have been hired by Hank. So weird haircut Seth is one of the all time like legend names in Barstool history. He was a political guy. I don't know what he was doing, but we hired him to be my campaign manager. And he had a, uh, he had a very weird haircut. So it's just weird haircut Seth. Famous video, he said he could throw a football 70 yards and we went to the local park yeah. and he threw it like 25. Yeah, let it go. Not nope, even not close. even close. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what an idiot. What a fucking idiot, weird haircut set. That was my campaign. That was 25 yards. That was a duck 25 fucking yards. Let's get out of here. He also, I had people, he was supposed to be managing the people getting the signatures. And he people just complained like he was sitting on a bench not doing anything. But yeah, we had a full-time manager, weird, uh, weird haircut set. And there were articles on it. It was like a real campaign i was trying to run yeah billy is going to actually try to do this so he I, he has some uh some people he wants to hire as his campaign manager do you have any suggestions for him like some uh some pitfalls that you saw when you hired weird haircut seth like things to avoid when you're hiring your campaign manager well weird haircut seth didn't know what he was doing do they have the signature thing is that a yes yeah, that... so it's actually not uh as many as you think it's only 1200 so I'm planning a rally, not this weekend, but next weekend uh, out in Montauk, um, where I think you, you own land there, correct? Yeah, I do. Could you be maybe my first signature? Um, because if you well, own I'm not property- registered, I'm not a registered voter there. Is that the same rule? No, no, no. You just need to own property to have a signature, have an oh. address. Well, Bill, so, uh, Dave, I don't want to- I'm I, not asking you to endorse Wait, 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 okay. wait, Billy, Billy, <laughs> let me step in. I, I, I advised Billy. I'm like his advisor. And he was like, maybe I should ask Dave for an endorsement. I was like, Billy, just tell Dave that you you plan on earning his vote. You know, like I, let I Dave will earn your vote. let Dave see why he would want to choose you over Santos if he did live there, which he doesn't. Yeah, for I'm the record, Santos he lives in Florida. Guy, I I enjoy the entertainment that Santos brings. So I, and I don't. I mean, that's a big thing to be like. I got Dave Portner as the first signature on my you know endorsement. I. I don't know. I yeah. I'm not, I can't just give it to you. I don't know anything about what you're running. Yeah, you have to earn his vote. Maybe maybe Miss Peaches could be the first signature. I don't know. Uh, but Billy, do you live out there? Uh, well, I've I frequented uh the congressional district. He um, lost I his virginity there. there That's his big tagline. <laughs> <laughs> for but so you don't have to live in the area you're running. No, you just have to be over the age of 25 and a resident of the state. Interesting. Um, and I need to get the lesser of 4.5% of the last congressional vote to total or, uh, 1200 votes. I mean, 1200 signatures. And I think we're pretty close there and, uh, it's a competitive district. I'm still debating whether to run as an independent where I definitely get on the ballot or after getting the signatures or running as a Republican to directly go up against Santos. So I'm talking with my campaign manager right now. And do uh, you have a campaign manager? Uh, yes, I do. Who? Uh, he's anonymous, uh, but he is very effective. <laughs> um, he works in Congress currently, uh, and has been advising me. So this mm. guy's leaving a real congressman to work for you? Well, he's Damn, helping. Damn, Big T. Yes, I well, no, that's just, not, that's just a surprise. He's allowed to work. He's allowed to work for two congressmen at the same time. Uh, he's just going to put it on his resume if I win. Uh, if not. Um, he's actually a part of a couple task force. Um, I, I could pull up his credentials. So if you win, are you him. done here? Um, I'm going to see. There's a lot of congressmen who work other jobs as well as being congressmen. I don't. I'm not done by any means. Um, I think I definitely uh, use my position to maybe uh, uh, help our best interests and uh, try to, you know, but we first got to get there. And, I wouldn't uh, mind having you, you know, it would maybe help like if so. so like if someone's doing construction too early near my house, can I call you if you're like, be like, shut that down? Uh, yes. Um, I will be serving in the federal government, but I will have um, some sort of influence on state uh, and local uh, lawmakers. Hmm.
sweetening the pot for you, Dave. You're thinking. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I you can never, I guess, have enough people in your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, you asked, is he done if he wins? What was your plan with Barstool if you had won? We hadn't gotten that far. So that that I, I don't I would have kept doing it. I don't know how I would have done both. I, I really didn't we didn't get that's why I'm like I'm glad I didn't win. I who knows what would happen. Well, never mind win. I didn't get on the ballot. Um who knows what would happen. There was a lot. There was a guy from Karma Loop. That I don't know if that company's still around. That was like a gen X type like company that guy was running there was a lot of angst in boston at that time that the mayor was really not friendly to like young people graduating yeah arian you got any questions for dave uh i mean now you can't kind of lay out the case pretty well it, it, it seems like it was a short run i mean is there anything that you wish you did different or, or like are you do you regret running at all or is it like no i mean it, we and we were doing the whole thing we we're selling merch like we had like you know that obama poster like hope we had that with my face on it uh el prez for el, el mayor i was serious about it i don't know i didn't realize how correct like they fucked me like it was eye-opening mm -hmm. like there was no way i i didn't the list of people who got on the ballot there's just no way i didn't get on the ballot so that was eye-opening to see they can just kind of fuck you like that well i guess, I guess the question is how how were they able to determine? Did y'all look into, or did they give you like a formal like report as to how they delegitimized the signatures you had? No, they just it, it was very simple. It's like they gave us one or two. You couldn't read it, so you didn't know what the name was. Or B, they weren't they they already well it was three things. Couldn't read it. They already signed for somebody else. weren't registered voter, but it wasn't like a name by name thing. Hmm. Hmm. Um, yeah, Billy. Do you have any concerns as a landowner in the constituency that you'd like to voice? Can you lower property taxes, Billy? <laughs> I can. So it's part of my reforming the tax code is part of my uh, campaign. Summer construction message. is always a thing like that's I don't you shouldn't be allowed to do construction in summer like rental places during summer. I'm going to be trying to lobby for more job growth in the off season uh, I don't, well, that, in the congressional mean no district, yeah. which means that no, we can probably incentive, that. we can incentivize construction to be done in the off season as opposed to during the high season. So that couldn't, couldn't you argue though that we're taking jobs away if we're not letting them work in the summer? No, no, we're going to try to just increase. Uh, we'll probably provide tax incentives for uh, off season work. So people will probably try to do more work in the off season as opposed okay. to the high season. So All right. we'll that would be that. how I tackled that. Nice. That's a good answer. David, good answer. You, are we off to a good start here with the Billy football campaign? Yeah, I, I all, again, it would be a lot easier if he wasn't going up against somebody that I have a soft spot for, um, a content machine, to be honest. Yeah. But, but and I, I do think he likes me too, Santos, to be honest. He does. Uh, I'll push back on the Santos over Billy thing, though. Wouldn't it be better to have a content machine that is also your employee who's in Congress? Wouldn't that be better for content for Barstool than having a congressperson that has no affiliation yeah. with Barstool? Yeah, I'd agree with that. But with all due respect, the level of output that Santos puts out versus Billy Football is apples and oranges. Yeah, I but mean, you to have, argue. But it's, because, hold on, but it's because Santos is already a member of Congress. If Billy's I don't a member know. of Congress, if Billy, you didn't hear about George Santos before, right? You only heard it because he is a, a congressman. If yeah. Billy's a congressman, we've heard about Billy when he wasn't a congressman. So just to push back on your point. Yeah, I don't know. Santos is, a, is a, an electric factory. I mean, he's an electric factory. You can't, nobody can deny that. Billy, maybe, maybe start wearing the vest. I'll make a prediction. Oh, when the, he's not a congressman, nobody's going to give a shit. Yeah, he hasn't produced much content at all since he's left Congress. True. And Fair when point. the cameras come out, which are around all congressmen, I guarantee I'll have more clippable moments, more viral moments for your uh, leisure. Okay, put that on. Put that on the platform for your le <laughs> for your leisure. <laughs> yeah. All right, Billy, you got anything else you want to ask, Dave? Uh, Dave, have you watched um, Last Chance Uganda yet? It's a fantastic series. If you haven't watched it, check it out. What What was it? I didn't hear what you said. So, oh, the, yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't watched it. I will check it out. Check it out. It's really, it's very, very good. 
for sure. Last question, a bit of housekeeping. All charity uh, merchandise has to go through you. And while I have you here, uh, would we be allowed to put out a T-shirt uh, for the Uga Uganda national team uh, with some of the proceeds going towards the team and some of the players who may be able to play in the United States? Yeah, I mean, charity, we generally give all proceeds to it. So if it's a worthy cause, I'm fine with it. Okay, Amazing. Cool. We got it okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. You're welcome. All right. Good luck. Tune in for Thank the you. third episode tonight. Uh, Billy really wears his heart on his sleeve in it. There's a solid clip of him crying for like a minute, which I think you'll enjoy. It's going to be it's, uh, live if you're listening to it right now on uh, Thursday the 14th. Dave, I'll send you the clip. You can watch it. It's, it's not coming out till later on today, though, but you should you should just watch this clip. It's a great one. Okay. Thanks, guys. Cool. All right. Thank you, Dave. Thanks See for coming Thank on. you. Bye. All right, Billy, how, how do you think that went? Decent. I do need money for this campaign. Okay, why are you already asking for money? Because that's that's what people do when they're running. So you campaign. don't really know why. You're just like, I need money. <laughs> yeah, but that's that literally actually like learning how congressmen act and what they do all the time. And basically they're just every night they're charging people for FaceTime with them um in dinners across dc to vote a certain way on things it's pretty disgusting i mean i don't mean to be cynical about our government system but it's literally that's all they do and attend hearings and vote on things and then they take money from people who tell them what to do mm -hmm. and uh if if i get elected to congress i won't be governing like that you look like a congress person already you got that going for you thank you you look like if also wasn't your your ancestor like the last person to die in World War One? No, no, no. That was a guy who looks like me. Oh, okay. No relation. No, he he was. I'm a vampire, so I like need to figure out ways to die to restart a life and new identity. And like World War One was ending, I was like, oh shit, I need to like hit a buzzer beater to start a new life. The look on Mackenzie's so, face is so funny. She's oh, trying to comprehend what you just said. <laughs> I have no idea. All right, so let's uh, let's talk about some other celebrities and outsiders that have run for public office in the past. In the past, obviously a big one. Hey, real quick, real quick, yep. real quick. Steven Spielberg just announced that there's going to be a Ready Player Two. Oh, I am ecstatic. I just want to take this moment for all the Ready Player One fans out there that reach out to me, tell me they enjoy the movie. This one's for you, baby. We have you to get wait. a new bit going for the Ready Player Two movie. Yeah, I'm never going to see it. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck punk. Never going to watch it. When is it coming out? <laughs> uh, I did not see that. All I saw was that it's happening. I didn't even read no further. Let's see. Spielberg movies uh, are like they're like college football games. Out of conference college football games where it's like Ohio State is playing against Nevada in 2031. Get ready for oh, it. So he didn't direct it, though. He's producing it. Okay. By the way, Ohio State would beat the fuck out of Nevada if that game happened. Oh, did you guys see that Lou Holtz has a podcast? Did yeah, see I'm that. So I'm so excited. Very excited. There's no way. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think he even knows what a podcast is? Me? Yeah, I can't wait for it. He said it's about this the, the direction of the country. Yeah. He's going to <laughs> slobber all over the mic <laughs> and tell me his old dusty ass opinions. Oh my god. First guest is Ryan Day. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. There is no one more passionate about restoring the culture of this country than me. That was in his announcement. It needs to be Lou Holtz and Mark May. That show was goaded. It was so good. I didn't understand a single thing either one of them would ever say. <laughs> like, I couldn't actually understand Lou Holtz. And then Wait. Mark May would talk for like five minutes. And I was actually dumber for having listened to it. I was like, what is this man talking about? It was How the old best is show. Lou Holtz? I would Gotta guess be Biden's age. I would I guess have his, I have his age. 80, Everyone 85. Okay. PFT's 85. Be a short ass podcast. Big T, what's your guess? I looked it up. Oh, Arian, uh, what's your guess? Lou Holes. He, he, he got to be, he got to be like 80, 82. 87. I, Arian, that was, very, that was very funny. It's going to be a short ass podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, because he, he 87. I mean, the future of that podcast is not looking bright. And I'm not, oh my God. I'm not, it's not, this is not ageism. It's just who at 87 decides, you know what? I need, I got some shit to say. Like, <laughs> like at that age, you're like, fuck this shit. Like, I'm out. Like, but not not Lou Holtz. He wants to change 
<laughs> Maybe bra. I don't know. Billy loosening his tie like he had a hard like day at work know. already. <laughs> <laughs> the he just had a long day at work. <laughs> he's, oh. just, he's just exhausted coming home, babe. Do you have me a beer? Oh, dude, I just, I just. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my god, his pit stains. Here. Oh my god. Hey man, we 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 appreciate the. The cell, man. Yeah. We appreciate it. It was great okay. effort, Billy. Great so effort. So, <laughs> you know, all... really sat back, did his whole. <laughs> I, I think there are probably a lot of listeners who are like me who are still. Conv- are you actually going to try to get on the ballot? I mean, yeah. It's, it's we're going to start the rally. Um, hopefully Where's get the a good rally? turnout. Uh, the rally, we're we're figuring it out. We need first secure some campaign fine funds which means i have to register with the elections commission and then hopefully we can get some small uh donations no little uh no amount is too little um hey, have you hit up billy's list yet uh where do you think i found my campaign manager but uh, first i need to register before getting donations okay um, yeah first things first the max donation is twenty five hundred dollars um uh from each individual um there's two individuals who I think could handle that here. Um, and then we can uh, move on to securing a venue. Uh, be fucked up, you think Mackenzie and I will send a check. Yeah. Fund a Republican campaign where you got to be fucked up. Well, I'm running as an independent. I, I want to run as independent because I think it's the, the path to victory, but PFT wants me to run directly against Santos. Um, no, so I, honestly, I, I think you should run as an independent. Um, my only worry is that Santos doesn't win the Republican primary. And then you would be just running as an independent against the other guy, which is fine. I, I don't mind you running as an independent. I just want at some point you going head to head with Santos. I think you need to run as if you're about to run against Santos. Yeah. I mean, ugh. yeah. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. It's all right. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk fundraising in a little bit, but let's take first things first. I think Billy, I, I want you to do this. I want you to to see this through. I'm trying. I mean, I got I got a ton of support uh, from those around me. People are ecstatic uh, in my family and social circles. Uh, they really want me to go through with this. Billy football for Congress. I didn't think you had that much hair on your chest, though. You got a lot of hair on your chest. I got a freaking high ass testosterone count, dude. Huh. Uh, Let's let's talk about some other celebrities and outsiders that have run for public office. See what we can learn from them. Um, first big one, obviously Trump. Trump was on Celebrity Apprentice, real estate, books. He was a celebrity. We don't have to talk about Trump too much. I think everybody knows Trump. Um, Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan was an actor. He was a two-term governor of California. Um, so when he got elected president, uh, he had some political experience. Uh, overall, I actually had a, a fair amount of it, but he was an actor. He was in 81 movies and TV shows, and he was the president of the Screen Actors Guild. So that is kind of like, you know, a position of public power. But yeah, old Ron, I actually think that Ronald Reagan being an actor helped him a lot when it came to his public speaking, when it came to his overall image, uh, when people saw him as like an old grandfather. Because he had he had practiced speaking in front of audiences. He was the Gipper uh, in Newt Rockney All American. That's the uh, win one for the Gipper speech. Notre Dame. That was that was no, that was uh, old Ronnie Reagan. Hmm. Schwarzenegger. Arnold. He. I, I'm going to count him as an Forgot athlete, Billy. There was a, a recall election. So um, in California, you can just recall your governors almost instantly after you elect them, which is kind of I think it's probably a stupid law to like elect somebody. And then you're like, no, let's do another election to vote them out. And then the turnout for that is going to be way, way lower. It's all the people that hate that person are way more likely to turn out than the people that voted for that person. It's like you have to keep perpetually electing somebody to be into office. Um, so. Uh, it was Governor Gray Davis, and there was a question on the ballot that asked who should replace the governor if he were to be recalled, and Arnold Schwarzenegger was the top choice with 48.1% of the vote among 135 people that qualified to be on the ballot. That's kind of crazy. 
That's a huge. But you know what's huge? No, but you know what's crazy? Because that was a write-in, right? Yeah. But remember when we did Enron? Yeah. Sw- uh, Arnold might have been a pawn for Enron. Oh, that's, remember that's right. Yeah. So I mean, we got to frame his his run in th- that context because, you know, how many lobbyists can you pay to like, like to get that written on the ballot to drum up support? Like Enron needed it, and it wasn't like they were going to spend the money to do it. Yeah, they were fucking over the state of California at the time. I mean, people, it's a little, he was definitely a pawn because he is an actor. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He announced his candidacy on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. That's kind of like you, Billy, announcing it on Macrodosing. I think podcasters have a a great cross uh, cross reference point with politicians uh, and a lot of the skills you get from podcasting help with politicizing. I agree with politicizing. Yeah. Yes. Uh, he was also reelected. So that's much harder to do than to just get elected in a, uh, in a recall election. So they reelected him in 2006 and, uh, he was a kind of a lifelong Republican. I remember I saw, I saw some interview with him where he was talking about seeing either Ronald Reagan or, or Richard Nixon on TV. And he was like, what is that man? And they said, that's a Republican. He goes, then I am a Republican too. And that's how he decided that he was going to be a Republican. That's pretty sick, honestly. Yeah. It's just like it clear. It's a clear decision for him at that point. You know what you want to be. And now would you consider Arnold to be a lib? He's big anti-Trump. I know that. I haven't paid enough attention to him to know. People, I think people started calling him a lib, um, but he also campaigned for George H.W. Bush and he was in an anti-drug music video sponsored by the Reagan administration. We got to watch that. <laughs> Can somebody try to find the Arnold Schwarzenegger just say no music video? By the way, at the time he was <laughs> he was doing the just say no thing. He was shooting himself, himself up with steroids left and right. <laughs> Stop the madness, 1985. They made drugs look so cool in this video. They, oh, that, oh there's there, Arnold. there he is, working <laughs> as a construction guy. They accidentally made a pro-drug music video. Everybody in that thing looks like they're having the best time ever. Yeah, at the beginning, they kind of looked cool. Yeah. Until they were in the ambulance and such. That makes me want to do more drugs. Well. Had the, had the unintended consequence of that. I um, think that's a music video or you? The, I mean, they make doing drugs look awesome in that video. All right. My favorite. Yeah, that, that shorty in the pool, if she sniffing coke on the on the on the hot tub. That, I mean, that doesn't look. Yeah, it looks like a good time. They had like stacks of money, like people driving nice cars. My favorite <laughs> scene in that was, uh, it was like two like old ladies in a kitchen and they're cooking up crack. <laughs> Every, everyone's doing it. <laughs> Probably happened. Probably did. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he uh, he was elected governor. And uh, he was reelected, and now he's a lib. Um, Al Lewis, he played grandpa on the Munsters, and then he became a free speech activist in the 80s and 90s. Um, That was a left-wing issue at the time, by the way, being a a free speech activist, railing against the FCC and the Parents Music Resource Center. Do you guys remember? So the, uh, the parental advisory, you know who was responsible for the parental advisory sticker on albums? Or had a big, oh, big part. I know this. Um, oh, don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me. It, it slips me, but I know this because I looked it up. Billy, what are you like, doing? Was it a... No, never mind. Was it Eminem? No. Nah, no, he no. He, he didn't want it, but um, it was the wife of a vice president. Yes. And I found out because when I released my album, I wanted to I wanted it to be like transparent. But then I was like, well, hold on, like be the black and white. And then I started looking. I was like, yo, you don't have to put that shit on your on your albums. You yeah. would just put it on their albums initially because as they put it on their albums, their sales went up. Yeah. So and it kind of became a stick. So now people just put it on their. I guess it's just habit. But when I figured it out, like I, I stopped putting it on my. On, on the projects that I released because you just not, there's no legal, you don't have to do it. Yeah. Some record companies decided that they would sign on for it. It was Tipper Gore, the wife of Al Gore. 
There you go. Yeah. So she was a, she was a big lobbyist for uh, for I guess censoring a lot of music. And uh, I remember she was really against Twisted Sister, the metal band that's <laughs> saying we're not going to take it. I want to rock. We're not going to take it. And the funny thing is, like, Twisted Sister, to my knowledge, doesn't really cuss on their albums. She just didn't like their image. And she was like, kids shouldn't listen to this. And so she put that put that sticker on there. Uh, so the guy from the Munsters, Grandpa from the Munsters, Al Lewis, he was um, against the FCC and against the Parents Music Resource Center. In 1998, he ran for governor of New York in the Green Party, and he wanted to be listed on the ballot as Grandpa Al Lewis, but they rejected it by the Board of Elections. Billy, have you have you thought about that? Would you be your Bill Cotter? Yeah, I'm Bill Cotter. Okay. Not Billy Football? I mean, I have to use my legal name. Okay, Bill Cotter it is. Um, also New York politician Cynthia Nixon. Do you remember when she ran against Cuomo in the primary in 2018? before everybody became a Cuomo sexual. That's true. Yeah. She she saw red meat and she was like, I can take this guy out. Everyone doesn't love her. He also has a nipple ring, which wasn't known at the time. You remember that picture? I do not. There's a picture of Cuomo wearing like a, a polo shirt and you can very clearly see he's got a nipple ring. Uh, so Cynthia Nixon, Cynthia Nixon from Sex and the City, she ran against him um, and she got 34% of the vote, which is, that's pretty high considering she was running against Cuomo. Uh, and then Cuomo got kicked out of office for a while. Uh, Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood won the election to become mayor of Carmel-by-the-Sea, California. It's a small town, 4,000 people in Monterey. Uh, the only thing I know, I know two facts about Carmel-by-the-Sea. Three, actually. That's where that TV show Big Little Lies was based. So it's like a bunch of rich people that live there. That's fact number one. Fact number two, Jim Nance lives there. Fact number three, you're not allowed to have ice cream shops downtown in Carmel-by-the-Sea. They're very anti-ice cream. I thought that's one of the things Clint Eastwood did. He made ice cream legal. Did he? I think so. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to keep reading about this. Okay, here we go. Big T. He was paid $200 a month. And he donated that to the youth center. And while in office, he helped to make ice cream legal to consume on city streets, added restrooms to the public beach, and got a library annex building constructed. So the reason why ice cream was not legal, and I think they might have made it illegal again in Carmel-by-the-Sea, is because that attracts a lot of tourists and families to the downtown area, having an ice cream shop. And... Uh, the rich people that live there want to keep all those. They want to keep all the, all the riffraff out. They want it to be like very elite and snobby and wealthy. So they made a no ice cream policy. And see, that's a that's a sticky situation because, so if you, my suggestion was going to be just don't have any good ice cream shops. You can have national <laughs> chains and stuff, but the, but the you know goody too snobby people mm -hmm. aren't gonna want that either. Mm -hmm. So now you've put, you've just got to ban ice cream altogether instead of, cause they want the artisanal gelato, vegan, you know, gluten free. Yeah. But then that's going to bring a whole crowd that they don't want. Yep. So just have, have shitty ice cream instead. But then you can't but then they don't want that. Yeah. Uh, he, he got so big in politics. He was at the 2012 Republican national convention with Mitt Romney. Do you remember his speech that he gave? I vaguely remember him being there, but I don't. He had an empty chair on stage, and he pretended that Barack Obama was in the chair. That's right. And then he just yelled at the empty chair of Barack Obama for like thirty minutes. That kind of rocks. <laughs> uh, what's he's... your favorite? What's your favorite ice cream place? Favorite ice cream place? Chain. Chain. Well, that yeah, so people know it. I don't. Mm, I don't know how to answer that. I don't know if, if I've got a favorite one. My rule is when I go on vacation, I eat ice cream or gelato every day. For sure. Every single day. You ever been to a Kilwins? No. Ooh. Great shit. I know what you're talking about. I was actually disappointed to find out Kilwins was a chain. I thought it was just a thing in Florida, uh, but apparently it's a chain everywhere, but it is delicious. They have a couple in the first district. Love that. New York. More ice cream. Billy, where do you stand on that on that policy? More or less ice cream? More. More. Okay. Correct. Good answer. Uh, Al Franken. Al Franken, former senator from Minnesota, 
uh, he went to Harvard and he was a political science major. And uh, after SNL, he decided that he would he would run for office because he wrote a bunch of books. I remember I was at LSU on spring break one time and he was giving a speech there and I stopped by his speech and he was just kind of like reading from his book. He was like a comedian who made he was like kind of John Stewart vibe. He would just make fun of Bill O'Reilly. That was his big thing. And then he decided that he was going to run to be an actual senator. He, he became a lot less funny when he became a senator. He took it like very, very seriously. Uh, and he won in 2008, then won re-election in 2014. Uh, but he was, they they got him out of office in 2017. Do you remember that? Grabbing. Yeah, he was he grabbing got, uh, uh, got other too'd. comedians. He got me too He got me too grabbing a... Uh grabbing chests he was grabbing chests on a uso tour right yeah was he like did people like him before as a comedian yeah i thought he was funny on snl he had that like nerdy nerdy thing going because i don't really ever i i only know him as like a politician yeah he was pretty funny i i used to watch a, a lot of old episodes of snl he was pretty good on it um shirley temple you remember her yeah. child actor she became uh she became an ambassador to Czechoslovakia. Where would Dude, you what do you think the best country to be an ambassador to would be? Ireland. Why? Yeah. Cuz you just take people out drinking every time they visit. Like rains all the time. Do you play golf or something? No, I think I agree with Billy <laughs> like Ireland Ireland wouldn't be that bad because you don't have any serious issues that you have yeah. to discuss with them. Well, ever since the the troubles are over, yeah, like it's like, oh, we won't send guns. Like, was there's, it, there's a couple of problems. Was it Woody Johnson, the owner of the the Jets? Wasn't he the ambassador to Ireland? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a great gig. Top spot. JFK, uh, his father was the ambassador to England. Honestly, if I were to take a spot right now, where would be a good place to be ambassador to? Spain, Probably like, Italy, yeah, Portugal. It, Italy's heating up a little right now. Um, dude, honestly, like Sweden would be pretty cool, or Iceland. Solid spots. Fiji. Wait, that's not a country. Uh, wait, Fiji, Fiji, yeah, Fiji's country. country. Yeah, 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 Fiji. Yeah, Fiji. Some island would be great. Yeah. Oh, in the Mediterranean, like Ibiza is owned by S Spain, France. I think it's Spain, but or Crete, not Crete. No, Crete's Greek. Um, Cyprus, Cyprus would be a good one. Oh no, that's split between Turkey and Greece. Monaco would be tight. Monaco would be. You just be rolling the dice every time. Yeah, just hit the casino, make a trip down to Nice, chill on the Riviera. That'd be good. I gotta say, being a politician is tiring. I'm like wiped right now. Already, Billy, you got to show more stamina than that. Billy's gonna be talking no, no, like but... Sleepy Joe in like two hours. I mean, well, honestly, I was up early, like preparing. Now I'm kind of crashing. Might have been the Red Bull. I'm, I'm back in it. I'm back in it. Is this gonna give you new appreciation for for Joe Biden, Billy? No. Um, Roseanne, she was a comedian, and uh, she announced that she was going to run for office on the tonight show also she ran for president in 2012 for the green party plot twist roseanne was a lib she ran in 2012 uh for the green party and uh finished second in the primary to jill stein and then she became the candidate representing the peace and freedom party with cindy sheehan cindy sheehan she was the um iraq war uh mother that lost her son that became like a peace activist so they ran together and then Roseanne said she voted for Obama. So she didn't, Roseanne didn't even vote for herself. Uh, she got 0.05% of the popular vote. Billy, would you vote for yourself? I don't know if I can. Okay. Uh, good, good. Uh, George Takai, he was on Star Trek, and then he ran for LA City Council, finished second place. Uh, He's kind of a loser, right? George Takai? Yeah, Nancy. Yeah, let's move on to some of the athletes. Okay, Caitlyn Jenner. Mm -hmm. Uh, she ran right against Gavin Newsom, unsuccessful. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of weird. She's she's a Trumpster, kind of. She got one percent of the vote. Yeah, 
Yeah. So where's her like Caitlyn Jenner is pretty far right. She's all over the map. I think she's all over the map. I think on some of the culture war stuff, she is far right. But I think on some of the like economic stuff, she's still very left. I don't know. You can't, you can't pin her down. Is she still trans? I think she's still Caitlyn Jenner, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, but Bruce Jenner was, I I don't know. I don't follow her. Bruce Jenner, I guess it's Caitlyn Jenner. I don't know. I'm probably saying this wrong, but uh, Bruce Jenner was a multi time, multi award winner in the decathlon, right? Yeah, he was like a killer, like the best athlete she, in the world. Wait, hold on. So, trans folk, do we refer to their former self as their current? I don't know. Gender? I don't know, but I, I guess I would like to be educated on that, but I know that the 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 tv told me that bruce jenner was a multi-time or a multi uh medalist in track and field the decathlon by the way is you have to be a freak of nature to win the decathlon it's insane yeah top of your yeah. head what are the events in the decathlon i got this you got i think it's the 100 meter hurdles you got uh i think it's a mile or the 800 one of those you got Pole vault, you got high jump, you got long jump. I think there's steeplechase. Um, javelin, javelin, shot, shot put, put discus. discus. Uh, shit, we just named nine. What's the last one? There might triple jump, triple jump. Oh, triple jump. Yeah. Okay. Oh shit! Did I just knock him out of the park? I think you yeah. did. Shout out to me. Yeah, but you got to be an absolute freak of nature to win that thing. Dude, you got to be a freaking Olympian. Steeplechase, like, bro. Maybe the dumbest thing ever. Like, they Jumping just hop puddles. over, like, piles of water. Like, yeah, piles of water. Puddles. Like, it's just so weird. I never understood that. Like, we used to have, like, track practice. And I used to see people practice for that shit. I'm like, that is so stupid. Why do y'all do that? <laughs> and they don't even, like, hurdle it, right? They, nah, like... It's like they jump. I think they jump on it. no i think they jump over it it's been a while they jump o- they jump over the uh the wooden thing and then you land in the water yeah it's like it's a so tough weird. mutter we it's should so do a weird. tough mutter no i'm not i'm not into the 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 dude, fitness fads no dude i've done a tough mutter it is fun as fuck dude what is Best. it what is it what is a tough mutter um it's like an obstacle course with a lot of mud and it's like one of the it's one of the best ways to set up a beer ever like is it like host... uh, american ninja warrior type kind of kind of i'm um, down for that it, yeah it's like five you can do a 5k one or a 15k one Ooh, and why is it that long it's not that long it's only three miles that's fucking long what are you talking about i thought it was like but you don't have course. to do it fast more of it's just like teamwork getting through obstacles um tough mutter hit us up i'd absolutely do a video um climbing stuff Swimming through ice water, getting electrocuted. It's pretty wild. I'm you should definitely try it. I'm down to do that. I don't know. I don't know. That sounds like a lot of work. A lot of mud. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I did one a couple months ago. Uh and it's awesome. We should do one. And then the you get a beer after. They give you a beer like right after you finish, and then you drink it, and you're like, wow, this is this is one of the best beers I've ever had. <laughs> I imagine it would be. That'd be a very tasty one. Um, Herschel Walker. We we already talked about him a little bit. Still wild that he ran. Plum. Dumb. May, that boy is plum dumb. Maybe maybe the the worst candidate of all time. Right. He's up there, bro. He's fucking up there, dog. He was bad, but there have been some. Give me another one that's I, worse than him. I don't want to say it. I mean, Billy's running. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> I think Billy's better. Billy's a way better candidate than Herschel yeah, Walker. Yeah, it, it was a joke, Billy. <laughs> uh, I said, I said halfway through your thing, there's a non-zero chance I would vote for you. That's facts. So, Look, honestly, once we get this up and running, once people learn about the real me, the me that America's going to see, this is going to be great. Uh, this is the beginning of a long political career. <laughs> Billy might be president one day. It uh, all starts here. Herschel Walker, uh, maybe an all-time line from him. 
when he was talking about Raphael Warnock, he was running against, he said, uh, a werewolf can kill a vampire. So I don't want to be a vampire anymore. I want to be a werewolf. That's <laughs> facts. I don't, I still don't get what that means though. Kill or be killed. But he's, he's saying that he is a vampire. <laughs> well, he was, but well, now he's a werewolf. Well, he said he didn't want to be a vampire, <laughs> implying that he was currently a vampire. He mm -hmm. probably got bit. You know how that works. Yeah, I, I don't know. I actually don't know how that works. Uh, but that was, you, you, in retrospect, that was like the the fifth weirdest thing that he said on that campaign. That's, that's I'm, I'm looking up. Uh, I'm looking up funny Herschel Walker quotes. I'm trying to find the, the funny one. Let's did y'all know? Um, just looking at other people, did y'all know Zelensky was like a celebrity in Ukraine? Yeah, yeah, he was like yeah, dude, he was he played the president. Really? Yeah, I had no idea about that. He was an actor that played the president, and then... Explains a lot. They're like, he looks like he could be president. Well, once you realize... If you check out what happened in 2014 in Ukraine, you realize that the U.S. deposed a, a Kremlin-sympathetic leader and imposed a leader we wanted. And that would be more uh, like want to do NATO stuff and want to be Western. It's... Do some research. I'm just saying, okay. we're not, we're not okay, totally yeah, innocent. I found, a, I found a couple of Herschel Walker quotes, but it's just the funniest part. One man said, what about getting a department that can look at young men, that's looking at women, that's looking at social media? They just want to continue talking, taking away our constitutional rights. And I think there are more, more things that need to be looked at that haven't been, that have been happening for years. And the way to stop it, putting money into the mental health field is another one. We in America have some of the cleanest air, cleanest water of anybody in the world. Since we don't control the air, our good air decided to float over to China. <laughs> no, that air. is facts. That's facts. So when, so when China gets our good air, their bad air got to move. So it moves over to the good air space. Then now we got now we got to get the clean that back up while they're messing ours up. <laughs> no, you're being intentionally obtuse. He cooked there. He cooked. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> No, nah, you know what he's saying. He cooked. <laughs> I have no Dude, idea what this man's trying to say. China produces like 70% of all of the uh, fossil fuel waste that's contributing to global warming. We like, we got a point, give credit where credit's due on pollution. Yeah, but are sure. they stealing our good air? Yeah, because we're the only ones producing it. China with the good air. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, back to Zelensky for a second. I didn't know. Hold on. Hold on. He said, they, they, they continue to try to fool, fool you. Oh, what the fuck just okay. They continue to try to fool you that they're helping you out, but they're not because a lot of money is going to trees. Don't we have enough trees around here? <laughs> Again, <laughs> yes. Too many, there's too many trees. You think there are more trees or people <laughs> in the U.S.? You know what's pretty crazy? Trees, you know, it's one of the largest uh, consumers of CO2 outside of the Amazon rainforest in the world. What's that? Trees. U.S. agriculture. Wait, what are you saying? U.S. agriculture. Factory farming? One of the largest consumers of CO2 in the world after the Amazon rainforest and the Congo Basin. Wait, consumers? So something that takes in Yeah, CO2? photosynthesis. Plants. Greenery. Oh, plants. A oh, yeah. Trees. Um, that question I asked was really stupid. Do y'all know how many trees are in the U.S.? No idea. If you Got a billion? Be billions, if you had yeah. to guess. Uh, well, since you said it was right. so stupid, I'm going to guess five billion. Uh, ooh, that's a lot of trees. I th I would say I would say I would say two to three billion. What if I I'm told actually you, only going to go around one billion? What if I told you there are allegedly. 230 billion trees Holy oh my shit. god that's a lot of trees. that seems right uh, no think about alaska think about how big alaska is uh i mean all the rural because we we live in the cities right so all the rural places it's just filled with fucking trees i was like yeah I, 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 alaska how is many trees the are in a square mile? most forested state how many trees are there in alaska i would what was the total for the united states 230 i would guess that there are um 150 billion trees in Alaska. 32 billion. Oh, I overshot that. 
There's still a lot of trees. That's crazy. That, is that number right? That's a lot of fucking trees. Is there somebody well, that goes out there and counts? That's what I'm saying. How? Where do we arrive at this number? So there are, in a typical forest, there are... Fuck, dude. Why can't they just give me how many square mi- how many trees are in a square mile? They're saying like 100 in a square mile? Uh, 50 trees per acre. Okay. In a typical forest. So it's, it's an estimate. That's so, how many in the world? I'm oh. seeing 3 trillion. Holy shit. How many stars are there? There's, I mean, uncountable. Octillions upon octillions and yeah. whatever the and alien got, is for got, a thousand. There's, there's, there's like several billion in our galaxy and there's several oh. billion galaxies. Wait, so there's more trees than stars in the Milky Way? Mm. One galaxy. Yes, that's one galaxy. Yes, a hundred billion stars. How many fish do you think there are? Less. You know why there's less than you think? Because there's not that many fish. We fucking eat them all. The deep part of the ocean, like most of the sea life, is near the shores. Or do you think there are more more fish in the ocean or trees in the United States? Trees. Oh wait, in the entire ocean? Yeah. I'm gonna go uh, trees. trees. There's no way there's that many fish. Yeah, I gotta go to the trees. Yeah. How many fish? How many fish are in the sea? Mm-hmm. Are there plenty. I know there's plenty of them. <laughs> okay, is this billion I got or trillion? <laughs> I got that a little late. Uh oh, this is saying 3.5 trillion fish. What? There's 3.5 trillion fish. Ah, fuck minnows, sardines, <laughs> shit. <laughs> So oh, you left that out of your calculation. Wait, wait. So are there more fish in the sea than there are trees? Uh, I saw an estimate of three trillion trees in the world. So yeah. And how many fish? There's in the no sea? way. 3.5. There's more fish. Than there's trees. more fish than trees. On Earth? Yeah. I don't. That think makes so. sense. There's so sense, many. But if you were... so many fucking fish. But think about how many uh, weeds there are. There's probably more plants than fish. The trees are like saying how many whales or sharks. I mean, there is or way more water than are. land. No, Billy, I know what a tree is. That's true. That's just wild to me. I would have said trees by a long shot. Yeah, as in, but trees are bigger. Think about how much water there is out there with no fish. A lot. Like lakes. How many whales are there? Uh n- not many. We hunt those motherfuckers. Seventeen thousand. No, Are you there's, kidding there's me? more than that. Well, I was exaggerating. I think oh, I, th- I was like, there's no way. I think Wait, there's, orcas I bet it's not a fish. lot. I think it's 1,500. Whales? 15,000 whales. Holy fuck, I'm so good. <laughs> fuck you, Arian. That's what I meant to say. 15,000 whales. I, I, was, I, I, was, I, I said it in disbelief. I didn't disbelieve you. I was just like, I can't believe that I'm disappointed in because you know we have a big part to play. There there's only 15,000 whales? Yeah, and only 2,000 blue oh. whales. That's fucked up. I'm seeing the the WWF says between 10 to 90,000. Yeah, but that that's counting like like right whales, like whales that are really dolphins. <laughs> it's like killer whales. So like all the whales in the world couldn't fill up a Los Angeles Lakers game. Wait. Wait, they don't there's only the 15,000. Yeah. Okay, I I was Google fucked me. There's 15,000 blue whales. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you Google how many whales are left in the world, they'll bring up 15,000. That that's Google's fault. Big tech, really. Yeah. There was 300,000 sperm whales in the 1700s okay. till we we whale ward them. So how many whales total? Though? Now I'm seeing 730,000 whales, and that seems far too many. No, because there's all that makes sense. humpback whales. I, I went whale watching when I went on vacation last year, and you go out in this boat and you see dozens of whales in the span of like an hour. So it's like if you see all these whales in this one tiny part of the ocean, how many, how many others are there? So that seemed like it was a low estimate. I guess when you take into account sperm whales. Humpback whales, blue whales, orcas, uh, belugas, belugas, yeah, norwals. Is that a whale? And they're probably counting dolphins. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. My, you know, these... humpback whales. Uh, recently, they recorded the first uh, sighting of humpback whales mating, and it was actually two dudes. I did not know that. 
Hey, yo. Yeah. Um, Zelensky. So here's a fun fact about Zelensky. He was Paddington Bear in the Ukrainian version of Paddington Bear. Paddington Bear might have killed uh, Kate Middleton. Wait, what? Oh, there was a tweet the other day. Paddington tweeted like, how do you get something out of the carpet? And people were like, oh, he killed her. <laughs> I'm well, I'll find it. Isn't Paddington 2 like one of the best movies ever made? How do you get marmalade out of a carpet asking for a friend? He tweeted that the other day. Oh. So now the the rumor mill's running rampant. Paddington <laughs> may have had something to do with Kate's disappearance. They knew what they were doing when they tweeted that out. They knew exactly what they were doing. Um, Any other athletes you guys want to talk about? Bill Bradley ran for vice president with John Edwards. Remember him? No. All-time piece of shit. It was Edwards and Bradley, and they ran against... Uh, I guess that would be George W. and Dick back in 2006. No, 2004. Got their asses kicked. Um, but he was the, uh, I think he was the center for the Knicks. He played for the Knicks, and then he became um, a senator for a while. Uh, let's see who else. Richard Petty. Richard Petty ran uh, to be the North Carolina Secretary of State in 1996. That would have rocked. Uh, because he was a county commissioner for Randolph County. He's Republican. He got beat by Elaine Marshall. And then Petty said after the loss, if I had known I wasn't going to win, I wouldn't have run. Makes sense. And in his retirement tour, he did a parade lap before every race, with the exception of the Southern 500, where Bill Clinton served as the Grand Marshal. So he, he didn't do that race. Uh, Tommy Tuberville, he's in Congress right now. Big T, what are your thoughts on Tommy Tuberville? I would expect that you would have... Can maybe some conflicting thoughts about the man. Why would I have conflicting thoughts? Because he's a Republican, but he's also an SEC coach that's generally regarded as a piece of shit. I don't like every Republican. I don't know. So you don't like Tommy? Uh, I think he's kind of in over his head, as he has been with most every job he's ever had, actually. He's the best example of just failing upwards. Yeah. For his entire career. There's that story when he was at Texas Tech and he was on a recruiting uh, he took some recruits out to dinner and then he left in the middle of the meal. He said he was going to go to the bathroom and just left to take, I believe the Cincinnati job. It may have been Auburn, but whichever. Yeah. He left and took another job. Yeah. Just all time piece of shit. Uh, so he was elected in 2020 and he's been in the news a lot recently. He's, he's holding up a bunch of, uh, military nominees, right? I believe that's him. Um, Tom Osborne, the coach of Nebraska from 73 to 97. He served three terms in Congress as a Republican in Nebraska, and then he went back to Nebraska to become the athletic director. But I feel like if you're a, a winning college football coach, you can definitely run, even if you're a losing t college football coach like Tommy Tuberville. Uh, but if you're a solid college football coach, you can just have a career in politics in whatever state you go I mean, to. Saban could be a senator easy. Easily. We got he years of experience of fucking people over, for sure. Oh, you, th you think Saban's going to run against Tommy Tuberville? That would be so electric. It'd be so funny. How many years is Tuberville? So is, is he coming up? <laughs> uh, let's see. Senators are what? Are they six. They're six. So he was elected in 2020. Nick Saban so running. two more years. So Saban will have the next two years off. Yeah. And then Saban Tuberville for the seat. What's what's the all time record? Can you look that up? Saving against Tuberville. I mean, I don't be. know that they may have only played a year or two. Yeah, because he left Auburn around the time that Saban got there. Yeah, um, Saban would beat the fuck out of Tuberville. Wow. Tommy Tuberville four and three against Nick Saban. That's a shocker. I beat him on the football field, and I'll beat him off the football field. There's gonna be there's gonna be so many football analogies. <laughs> oh, yeah. So most of those were uh, when Saban was at LSU. Yeah, he beat him in two thousand oh two oh four, and then he was one and one against him at Alabama. Beat him at Saban's first year, and then lost thirty six nothing in 08, which was his Tuberville's last year. How many coaches can say that? Can say that they have a winning record against Nick Saban? Seven. 
Seven, and Tommy's one of them. Tommy Tuberville, Barry Alvarez, Lloyd Carr, Steve Spurrier, Hayden Fry, Tom Osborne, and Joe Tiller. Wow. Elite company. Still, that would be that would be so good. Uh, Anthony Gonzalez, you remember he was Ohio State, and then he played for the Colts. I think he, yeah, he played one year for the he Colts. He was a re- little slot receiver, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he got, I think he got a bad concussion. I think he had some. I remember, yeah, I remember he was all right, man. Yeah, he was, he was shifty. He was a pretty good player. Yeah. And then he was in Congress from 2019 to 2023. He's a Republican? Republican, and he was. Uh, There's no liberal athletes that, like, you know, all I'm hearing is Republican athletes. Yeah, what? That's a good point. Well, I guess Bill Bradley. Um, but Anthony Gonzalez was one of ten Republicans to vote to impeach Donald Trump following the January sixth Capitol riots, and then he got voted out of office. Damn, that was his undoing. Uh, I've got a liberal athlete for you. You know who? Uh, I was very interested to find this out. Uh, communist, actually. Who? Maglia Ordonez. Communist. Do you know about him? I don't know who that, who's that. Uh, he was elected mayor of 2013 of a town in Venezuela, and he supported Hugo Chavez and campaigned for him. Huh. Yeah, I'm reading this right now. He was quoted in an ad for Chavez. What is his name? Maglio Ordonez. He was a pretty good baseball player for the Tigers like when I was a kid. He said, uh, the best of the revolution and socialism is yet to come. This guy's keep, shit. Keep, keep reaching. Keep reaching, Venezuela. Dude, why does anyone think... It could ever work. Socialism? Because it works. The fuck? Where? Do you like ocean spray? Cranberries? Yeah. That's a socialist company. Is it a company. commune? That's a socialist company. It's a company, not a country. What's your, you said it doesn't work. It's a governing system. The... Sorry, you broke up. Say again. Define it. Socialism? Yep. I don't have the exact definition off my head. And okay. you're going to use that as the crux of your argument. No, I'm not. Like I, Most people that say socialism doesn't work can't define it. It is uh, the collective distribution of a social group. It's labor. I was going to say Maglio Ordonez would be a, a great dozen uh, answer candidate before yes. y'all went off on that tangent. He's like the quintessential dozen answer. Like a pretty good mean? player. Oh, oh, was it? Okay. A good name for a rapper that loved getting head would be Maglio Mordomias. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put that in the file for later. Good one. Uh some other fun ones on the list. Oh, Heath Schuler is on this list. I I forgot that he was a Democrat, uh, but he was a socially Heath conservative. Schuller? He was a he was a blue dog Democrat. He was one of those that was like socially conservative, but I'm a Democrat. Um, he was serving in Congress from 2007 to 2013, and then uh, state Republicans gerrymandered his district, and he chose not to run again because he was going to lose. But Heath Schuler, he was the uh, the third pick of the 1994 NFL draft. By the Washington Redskins, a little maybe a little roadmap here for Aaron Rodgers. So uh, he stunk as a quarterback. By the way, everyone, mm-hmm. this was coming off the the Redskins were so good in the '80s, early '90s, and then boom, we got another good quarterback. Guess what? We're gonna run it back again. And then uh, ever since Heath Schuler, the Redskins they stunk. 1993 Heisman. Heath Schuler was the runner up who won it. Ooh, 93. 93. Oh, it had to be what? Uh, Tommy Frazier? No. He's a little earlier, I think. No, he was in the nineties, early nineties. Um, Danny Warfel. Uh, correct. Uh, no, correct state. Oh, uh, was it um, what's his name? Played Ward. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Now you're on the right school. Uh, Charlie Ward. Yes, Charlie, Charlie Ward. Ward. Charlie Ward won the Heisman Trophy. And then went to play for the Knicks. Played in the NBA. So the the Heisman all-time athlete, bro. The yeah, Heisman finalist athlete. that year played in the NBA. Then second place was a congressman. Uh, Marshall Falk finished fourth. It's a pretty good draft class. Trent Dilfer ninth. 
Hmm. If Marshall Falk goes to another school, he wins the Heisman. He was insane at San Diego State, bro. 93, 300 attempts for 1,530 yards and 21 touchdowns. Yeah, Pretty good. That's insane that you haven't pulled. What, uh, all-time worst, maybe you can answer this, Big T. He sure had the worst back number of all time, dog. Is it like a personal, like, why? Would, he was number 21 at quarterback. That is horrible. Why, why did he do that? I have no idea. It just looks so bad, dog. What do you think of 99 at Michigan um, uh, back in – why do I always remember, forget this guy's name? You're talking uh, about Denard Robinson wore that for like yeah. a couple games. That was like a special yeah. – that wasn't his number. It was like one of their players had an yeah. injury or something and like they gave out 99 to like the the team leader or something. Denard I think that was Robinson. pretty cool. Yeah, did he but it wasn't like running back in the league for a little bit. He was on. He played no, for the Jaguars. He did not play. Yeah. Running, he did not play running back. Aaron, when he got drafted, they listed him on the depth chart as offensive weapon. Yo, so what I remember, I was in the league with this cat. What I remember about this cat was he didn't tie his shoes. Yeah, that is Shoe the legs. weirdest shit. That was his but he wore small shoes. So they were tight. I, I just remember my coach was like, what the fuck is wrong with this kid? <laughs> I, <remember he> said, <laughs> I forgot I forgot that about Denard. Yeah, I, that's the only thing I remember about him. Wait, did he, he, he play wore... with, with you or just – did he play on the no, Texans no, no. or just in the league? No, he was in – He played. we played Jaguars twice a year. Oh, okay. And so I yeah, was just – So you knew the – Got it. Yeah. He – I think the story behind it was that when he was younger, he had shoes that were too tight and didn't fit, so he always wore them untied, and he had some of his best games. And then he just kept doing it, wearing small shoes untied. That's such a wild thing to do. Wow. Yeah. Because, like, there's so many injuries. Like, so many bad shit can happen. But did it happen? I don't I didn't follow his career. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I, at some point a coach should have told him like, "Hey, I get that that's your nickname, but you got to tie your shoes, buddy." Mm, made it to the league, dog. It's true. He ran a four three. Did he tie his shoes at the combine? I don't think he did. Uh, musicians. Kanye West. He got seventy thousand votes in twenty twenty. I forgot about that. I whole. was actually unaware that he ended up actually on the ballot. A in, lot in of some it was states, a lot of states did not put him on the ballot because he didn't he didn't complete the uh, the process, and then other states just were like, "No, no, Kanye." Um, That's wild to know that you know you have seventy thousand for sure. You have seventy thousand loyal fans, dog. Like you got to be a loyal Kanye West fan to vote him in for president. Yeah, to write him. So you know for sure I got seventy thousand riders with me, bro. Do you think That's he would wild. get more votes now or fewer votes now? Uh, more. Oh, embrace the you think? Yeah. yeah, I think he'd get more now. Why? Ever since he went on his like Jewish diet show. Do you know how many people are anti-Semitic and love that shit? It's gotten mainstream. I think. I mean, I guess seventy. You can find seventy thousand nut jobs anywhere, but like, I think people are mostly over him. Wait, he just dropped like a number one album. What do you mean? <laughs> his album just went number one. I think people will always listen to his music, but like, I I think in general people are maybe he could get more than I don't know. I think he can, and and he walked back his his uh, anti Semitic stuff a little bit. Because <laughs> he was watching Twenty One Jump Street. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's such a good reason. It's just wild. <laughs> oh, I mean he he's gonna have a tough time living down that appearance on on Infowars. Bro, <laughs> he Dude. had a net and a Yahoo. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> and then Alex Jones was like, "Let's let's uh make sure that you're not let's saying back. no, Kanye. You don't mean that. You don't mean that." You don't mean Hitler. Yeah. You don't mean Hitler was good, Kanye. Let's make sure we clean no. that up. No, said, he no. was good. I love Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I love everybody. Do not clip that, Maddie and Mac. That's a wild thing to clip. Do not clip that shit, bro. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Jello Biafra. Do you guys know who Jello Biafra is? I mean, Billy didn't know three. You guys don't know three eleven, so you don't know Jello Biafra. Not At least in three eleven, it was mid. Uh, I'm not out here like standing on a a box for three eleven. I'm saying three eleven day was fun. They made a couple good songs, but uh, Jello Biafra was the lead singer of the Dead Kennedys, which all time name for a band. The That's Dead a Kennedys. Wild name though. Yeah, I mean they're they're the very definition of punk rock and. Uh, Jello, he named himself Jello Biafra after an airdrop. I forget what country that the U.S. was providing, like relief materials to, but they were starving. The people were starving there, and we dropped just a shitload of Jello on them. It was in Biafra. I don't know what country Biafra is in, off the top of my head, because um, I'm bad, like... bad at geography. I mean, you just, I could I could look it up right now and then let you know. But I think it's in East Africa. Wait. Oh no, it's it's south of Nigeria. Yeah, so we uh we airlifted a whole bunch of jello. We're like here, they'll they'll eat just all the jello that we have. But Bro, uh, that like speaking of US intervention, Haiti is heating the fuck up. Yeah, yeah, we're probably gonna have to evacuate everybody from the embassy down there. They're they're sending a ton of troops over. It's the the Prime Minister stepped down, it is a failed state. Yeah. It's it's like going Somalia route. Haiti has had a, a pretty tough go of it for the last like I don't know hundred years, probably longer Dude, than that. But like since the earthquake, and I mean we someone's got to look into what happened with all of the money donated to Haiti. Yeah, I mean there was a bunch that was donated. There was an entire like movement. I think it was called like Halle Haiti or something like that. Wyclef Jean was a big part of it. A bunch of celebrities. I did a- I personally was part of a bake sale that did like 1.5 K for Haiti in middle school. Yeah. Cause the, the earthquake killed like hundreds of thousands of people, didn't it? And then it left a ton of people homeless over there. And so there was a big movement to donate money to help save Haiti. And then I'm just saying the money, the money went embezzled like across the chains. I'm just saying, you know who they're blaming for it? Who? The Clintons. Okay. I mean, I don't know. I don't know exactly what the Clintons did with, with Haiti, how involved they were. Wouldn't surprise me. Every single, every single dollar that was donated to the Haiti relief, uh, whether it was state, whether it was private donations, there's just such bad accounting of what happened to it. I'm sure most of it, if not all of it went embezzled by somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's over three billion raised for Haiti. Yeah, and Haiti says they never, they only got three percent of that. Three billion dollars, and you also have to take into account that the people that were running Haiti at the time uh, were known to be corrupt. There was probably some embezzlement going on on that end too, maybe some kickback. I don't know. No one knows what happened, but yeah, Haiti's fucked over right now. Haiti hates the Clintons. Yeah, from what I'm reading right now. Uh, yeah. The Clintons are crooks and liars. They took all the money for themselves. Yeah, I know a bunch of people that don't like. I've never. I don't. I don't know a lot about it, but a lot of a lot of people don't like Hillary because of that shit that they did in Haiti. I'm going to a, a Haitian wedding next week. I'll do some boots on the ground research and see what they and think about the Clintons. Another... Thirteen, actually, no, thirteen billion was pledged by international donors. That's, Where the hell did that all go? That's a crazy amount of money to raise for anything. Yeah. Um, I didn't know the earthquake killed that many people. That's wild. Yeah, because the buildings there weren't up to code for anything. They weren't ready to withstand anything yeah. like that. And so it just collapsed every every building over there. Right. And then there was oh a my God. massive famine. Turns out the first people to say... Uh, Hillary Clinton should be in prison where were Haitian po- pro Haitian protesters back in like right after the earthquake. I'm going to do some research on that, Billy. I'll let you know what I would like to, yeah, Haitians. I would like to see what the people say, man. Yeah. Uh, Arian in your neck of the woods, Scarface, he ran for, uh, was it Houston city council? Yeah. 2019. Yep. Um, Scarface. Hey, man, so- Willie D Willie D ran. I think was it, or something I forget, but Willie D ran. They was both uh, part of the Ghetto Boys. He ran for uh, yeah, Houston City Council. Ghetto Boys were legendary. 
Um, yeah, legendary music group. It was called uh, the the Positive Purpose Movement. This is kind of a banger. This was the tagline: "Put the neighbor back in the hood." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so he yeah. lost in a runoff. So he almost got elected. I hope he runs yeah, he again. Almost won. I got a. Uh, that's one of my homeboys. He uh, he is confirmed going to be on my next music project. So I'm gonna have a, a song with Scarface, bro. I'm hype about that. That's awesome. Do you feel that's any pressure? Too. Nah, I'm, I'm very confident in my pen. So are you? You're, have you written the music for it yet? I have the beat. I have the beat and the hook. It, 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 you, 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 you wasn't lying. Do I feel any pressure? Yeah, yeah. I was a little vibrato right there. I'm not vibrato. Uh, bravado. Um, I haven't written my verse yet because I'm like, this gotta, you know, what I'm saying? I gotta show up on this one. Yeah, I show up. Yeah, that's cool though. Yeah, the hook is solid though. Keep us posted. Got you. I'll send you the beat. The beat is okay. Amazing. Um, Kinky Friedman. He was a musician. I know. I I'm very familiar with Kinky Friedman. Cause I, I lived in Austin for a while. And so his stickers, he would be everywhere. He branded himself as uh, being a, a giant Jewish cowboy. And he was like the, if you think of like why Austin's weird, people would be like, yeah, Kinky Friedman. He's, he's the case study in that. So he ran for governor of Texas in 2006. And one of his goals was the de of the state. His campaign slogans included how hard could it be? Why the hell not? My governor is a Jewish cowboy, and he ain't kinky. He's my governor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jesse the Body Ventura helped campaign for him, but he finished fourth in a six-person ra- race. He got 12.5% of the vote for governor. That's pretty impressive. Uh, but he's like a local legend. I feel like every town has like a guy that they're they're known for, just like a guy that's like, oh, there, there goes kinky walking down the street. He was that guy in Austin. Uh, Clay Aiken was a runner-up in American Idol. Who did he lose to? Anyone? Ruben, Ruben Stuttered. Stuttered. Ruben Stuttered, yeah. And uh, he won the Democratic primary for a North Carolina House seat by 400 votes in 2014. He lost the general election by 18 percentage points. Clay Aiken, um, all-time creepy song, If I Was Invisible. I'm going to pull up the lyrics right now to If I Was Invisible. That was like his big jam. I was invisible. Clay Aiken. I'm just going to read some of these. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What you doing tonight? I wish I could be a fly <laughs> on your wall. Are you really alone? Who's stealing your dreams? Why can't I breathe you into my life? What would it take to make me, to make you see that I'm alive? If I was invisible, then I could just watch you in your room. If I was invisible, I'd make you mine tonight. If hearts were unbreakable, then I could tell you just where I stand. I would be the smartest man if I was invisible. Well, I already am. Very creepy. Oh, no, that's <laughs> fire, dog. He, he wrapped it up at the end. That's actually kind of lit. He did wrap it up being like, I already am. That was am. nice. That's nice. <laughs> nah, he, he saved he, he, himself. Shout out to the writer, bro. That was a fire line. <laughs> it's also, I'm still going to go back to if I was invisible, I could just watch you in your room. Pretty, yeah, so yeah. By, by saying he is invisible, is he saying... Uh, he doesn't exist to the you person. Said, well, right, well, but well, he me. could also be, but he said, if I was invisible, I could watch you in your room. I'm already invisible. He's therefore, spying. he is already watching them in their room. No, I, okay. I, I hear that. <laughs> By the transitive property, I think you might be correct, but he's, the, the tagline at the end is just him being like, oh, I, I understand well, he's what he's going me. for, Yeah, but you could also interpret it You could make that argument. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. That is fucking hilarious. <laughs> Wait, hold on, you already are standing outside. That makes it creepier. Yeah. Yeah, I've done all this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is creepy. Um, Dr. Oz, he ran against Fetterman for uh, for Senate. That He might have been a worse candidate than Herschel Walker. No. He didn't even Who? live there. I think he Who? lived in New Jersey and he was running for the Senate. Dr. Oz. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no. But he's not worse than Herschel. There's nothing wrong with being a carpetbagger and running for a constituency <laughs> where you don't live. Yeah, but this was like out of state. He lived in New Jersey, and then he was running for Pennsylvania. It was the lie, though. He like he was trying to convince. He like they did a whole bunch of things to try to convince people that's where he was living. Yeah. Uh, Howard Stern. He ran for governor of New York as a libertarian against another Cuomo, Mario Cuomo. 
He lost? He lost. He, Stern claimed that he wow. planned to reinstate the death penalty, remove As, tolls, uh, and okay. limit road work to gra graveyard shift hours. And once those three goals were accomplished, he would resign and pass the governorship to his lieutenant. And then Stern withdrew once it was required that he had to do a financial disclosure form. <laughs> uh, because he's never told anybody how much money. That means he makes a fuckload of money. Yeah. If he's like, no, I don't want people to know how much money I make. Uh, Wyclef Jean, he did. He said that he was going to run for president of Haiti, and he filed papers to be a candidate. However, the nation's electoral council said Wyclef did not meet the residency requirement of having lived there for five years before the election, so he withdrew his candidacy in 2010. Uh, Manny Pacquiao, he has served in the Philippine House of Representatives and the Senate. He tried to run for president there in 2022, but he's like a legitimate uh, politician in the Philippines and wow. national hero. They just love Pacquiao there. Conor McGregor might run for Ireland's presidency. I think what we can learn here is just name recognition is the biggest hurdle that you have to overcome to be a politician. Yeah, you're telling me. And Billy, you, I mean, tell me about the demographics of your district, Billy. Uh, well, it's a lot. So there are more houses than residents. It's, you know, it's the Hamptons. There's a lot of uh, seasonal residents. Um, there is a military base uh, at the tip of Montauk uh, with a large military population who vote. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of working class, blue collar uh, Americans. Um, and there is some, a large uh, immigrant population, fishermen. Um, I think, uh, honestly, you know who I need to talk to? I need to talk to uh, Bill, uh, Billy, uh, fuck. Billy. Why am I blanking on his name? Billy fuck. No, uh, Lenny's favorite, Billy Joel. Yeah. I need to get an endorsement from Billy Joel. I think you get Billy Joel and Dave Portnoy. You're you're on a good trajectory right there. I and I can also I think I can get an endorsement from uh, Governor former Governor Pataki, and okay. uh, one of my former professors. So, you know, working on it. How would you go about getting Governor Pataki to endorse you, Billy? Just don't worry about it. Okay, I won't. Uh, <laughs> another thing you could run on Billy is your your district is kind of close to. Uh, would that be LaGuardia Airport? No, dude, it's not. It's so far away from LaGuardia. Which, where is LaGuardia? You're thinking, you're thinking you of know District where the 3, are? which is, no, your District 1 is uh, what I'm running for. It's District 3 is where Santos used to sit. Do you not go to that mini golf tournament in the Hamptons? I did. It took I, us three hours to get yeah, there. Yeah, that was a pain in the ass. You're right. Uh, but I, I would imagine that you do have flight traffic in and out of LaGuardia that goes over your Well, district. in the Hamptons private airport, that's a different story. Okay, so here you can run on this, Billy. For the Hamptons private airport and also for LaGuardia traffic, you're going to investigate Boeing and make to make yeah. sure that they don't have wheels falling off their planes, crushing your residence's roofs. By the way, we got to talk about that Boeing uh, whistleblower getting shot in the head. Um, they're saying it's a suicide. I mean, he was about to testify the next day. Interesting. I think it has more, you know, looking into it, I think it has to do with reverse engineering of UFOs. I think he's a whistleblower who came forward. He was reporting on certain things, but he was about to divulge information about uh, UFOs, like a lot of recent uh, whistleblowers like Gorsuch. Okay, very, very interesting possibility. Uh, I think you should still investigate Boeing. I will. Thank you. Thank you for your service, Billy. Uh, all right, anybody else we want to talk about? It's been a packed episode. Steph, yeah. Steph Curry kind of said something alluded to maybe. Like she gave him an out. I don't know if you saw it. She gave him out to be like, is, are you, just, you for real? Or and he's like, oh, dude, leveraging my influence for good. So he might run for something. Shout out to the point guard. Hope oh, it's not in California. Wrong. He's not lefty enough for them. He recently he came out. Oh, against, he's uh, a, he's a NIMBY. Yeah. Yeah. He's a NIMBY. What is the NIMBY? Not in my backyard. It means you're liberal till they, they want to build, you know, 
low income housing near you and then you're not oh yeah that makes sense yeah that makes sense so he was on cbs mornings promoting his kids book i'm extraordinary and they asked him about running for president after his playing days are over maybe i have an interest in leveraging every part of my influence for good in the way that i can so if that's the way to do it then i'm not going to say the presidency but if politics is a way that you can create meaningful change or if there's another way outside of politics so yeah he didn't shoot it down Mm -hmm. i feel like most people if they asked you like, do you plan on ever running for president? You would just say, no, that would suck. <laughs> right? Like, if if they asked you, Arian, do you plan on running for president? Would you run for president? No, he'll not. There we go. Billy, would you run for president? I, let me just, one election at a time, man. <laughs> See, that, that's the that's the exact example I was looking for right there. Billy <laughs> has will not rule out running for president. Oh, man. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us on Macrodosing. It's been a, a fun episode, and uh, I look forward to watching Billy's campaign ravel. I would. I don't want to say unravel. <laughs> it's, we're raveling. Just if you're in New York's first district, please reach out to me. Uh, I hey, would love together? volunteers for help running this rally. Uh, this rally is going to be. It's going to be lit. When it, is the rally? You know, my rally is going to be not this weekend, but next weekend. Um, it's going to be fun. Uh, it, the least it, it's going to be a party, dude, just show up. We're going to have some fun. Just got to sign some stuff. Um, and we're going to have a great time. Uh, everyone's invited. Uh, you know, we'll, there's going to be a keg. Um, that's all I can promise as of right now. Get Michael Rubin out right. there. Bring your ID. We're going to investigate the white party. If I'm elected. The Republicans? A lot of people saying, yeah, <laughs> the white party, there's some people are thinking it's the Illuminati. We're going to investigate it. We're going to find Michael Rubin and be like, hey, you know, people who live here year round think you're doing weird shit with celebrities on the beach, all dressed in white. You sacrificing virgins to some Moloch <laughs> God or something. Well, we got to investigate it. Okay. All right. I love it, Billy. All right. Billy football for Congress. Bill Cotter for Congress. Excuse me. Yeah. All right. You know, Bill Carter, but I'm Bill Cotter. Okay. We'll see you guys next week. Love you guys.